Convention Park in Altoona, we present the championship in single A from Altoona, Pennsylvania, Mansion Park. Hello again, everyone. Jed Donahue along with Mark Shuey, the coach, Gary Sutton. The champion from the West, Farrell. The Steelers roaring in as the defending state champ. Southern Columbia, the runner-up a year ago, would love to topple them and strike gold here this afternoon. Well, we expect another close matchup. Last year, Farrell won this game six to nothing against Southern Columbia. Both teams feature significant injuries coming into this particular game. Mark Rico Rossini has burned everybody for more than 1,700 yards and more than uh, 20 touchdowns on the season. Had a tough, tough fall last week after rushing for 200 yards through three quarters in the Eastern Final against Shenandoah Valley. Well, that's right. Rico Rossini, the very fine tailback, unfortunately suffered a, a broken leg in that Shenandoah Valley game. He will not see any action today for Coach Jim Roth's Southern Columbia team, but uh, they have a fine trio of tailbacks to uh, boost the running attack. The weather will be partly cloudy. Winds 5 to 10 miles an hour. They're a swirling wind. They're not coming from either direction, right to left, but they will change throughout the day. The temperature is about 28 degrees here in Altoona. But, uh, yeah, a fine trio of tailbacks to pick up for Rossi. And Coach Jim Roth says this actually can pick up the team. He says with our best player out, you guys have to step it up even another notch here in Altoona. Gary Sutton here down on the field, and they've done a great job here with the Altoona Area School District as far as clearing this AstroTurf field. And it's a pretty fast track considering three inches of snow fell on the area the night before. Well, one of the biggest wins of the year for the Altoona football team today because they were out here with shovels and got this field into absolutely magnificent condition here at game time. It is a little bit wet, Jed. It may be a little bit tough on sweeps, but as far as running north and south, you couldn't ask for a better texture down here. Should be a great afternoon here at Mansion Field as always. Well, there's a couple of been there, done that's as far as these two schools are concerned. Farrell, the defending state champ, Southern Columbia three-time Eastern champion. They won it all in 1994 with a magnificent performance against Western Beaver, winning that game 49-6. Last year, couldn't get their offense out of the driveway. Farrell got in the head of senior quarterback Brad Osavala and basically thundered to the 6 to nothing win. Gary, what do you say? Let's go to Jim Roth, your Southern Columbia. Are you using the revenge factor to try and get an edge today? Well, for Jim Roth of Southern Columbia, success has been his middle name. 13th season, 146-25 and 1. He's been to this dance you're on a little bit different level right now. He knows that this game is going to be one of the trenches this year. Last year, his front line could not get it done. They couldn't punch the kind of holes in that line of Farrells that allowed them to score 38 points a game. So he's going to really be looking at that this afternoon, I think, Jed, and trying to get a real fire out off that offensive line. For Farrell, they're basically a new episode of ER. They have a lot of injuries, Mark, heading into this game, and they are significant, and they are in the skill position. Well, that's right. Uh, Chico Daniels, their fine tailback, or Carlos Daniels, pardon me, he, he's just coming back from a broken ankle. Broke his ankle in week number eight. He has just returned, re returned last week. He's a two-way starter. Wasn't really effective running the ball, but he's very good defensively. He is still dinged up, not 100%. Chico Pinkins, leg injury. He will not be able to do the punting today, although he's expected to see duty offensively and defensively. James Pulliam, he's a very fine nose guard. He's going to be very busy today battling that big offensive line of Southern Columbia. He has shoulder problems, so, yeah, Farrell, they're really banged up. And Lou Falcone, the head coach who has 147 wins, you know, every bit as successful as head coach Jim Roth, he is very concerned about the condition of his team going into this championship game. Gary, if there's one thing when you get to a state championship environment, I guess it's called familiarity. And I think for Lou Falcone, of, uh, the head coach at Farrell, he has that by being here a year ago. How do you keep emotions in check and make sure emotions don't create a negative, say, a turnover early? Jed, one of the things that happens here is that you get poised when you come to this dance several times, and that's exactly what I think Lou Falcone has right now and poise is going to be the name of the game for both these teams today. They're familiar with each other, but at the same time, there may be some new wrinkles they'll be looking at out of that Delaware wing tee that Southern Columbia won so well. And for Farrell, they've got to cover up the injuries that Mark talked about a moment ago and somehow get by the afternoon with that brilliant defense we saw last year. It should be an interesting matchup, but I think poise is the name of the game for these two veteran coaches and how well they pass that on to their teams. Farrell has won the toss and has elected to receive, as you just saw. Mark, going on defense first, seems to be a trend a lot of coaches like to go you break your sweat early defensively and you go for that kind of advantage well these are two very similar teams they're smash mouth teams they like to establish their running game and basically whoever establishes the running game first will have a better chance of winning this ball game we're going to take you around the site sounds of mansion park with our national anthem before the single a final between farrell and southern columbia
See the color guard making its way out right now. Kind of a gray, cloudy day here at Mansion Park in Altoona, but comfortable. Not, you know, the cold kind of raw weather that we've had over the last couple of years. Saw the forecast, 28 degrees here at uh, game time. And uh, with winds at 5 to 10 miles an hour, not really significant and should have no impact really on the passing game. So really, we've got a fast track and conditions pretty much optimum for a state championship environment here in single A. And uh, let's go now to our national anthem. Every game starts with it, the National Anthem. Great job down on the field. Let's uh, give you a taste of what the starting lineups are going to be like. And uh, we'll bring up the Farrell offense first. And, Mark, they don't throw the ball an awful lot. They love to keep it on the ground. And uh, there you see some of the big guys up front for Farrell right there, starting with the tackle, Ernie Somerset. And the guard is uh, number 55, Sim Harrison. Brian Kushik, he will be uh, uh, starting for Farrell as well. Brian Kushik's a big guy, 6'1", 270. He's a senior. Also, James Pulliam. And Dante Newell, Ed, looking at the Farrell offense. The skilled well, people, Willie Evans, tight end. He has banged up a bit, too. Injured his shoulder several weeks ago. He is not 100%. Split end is Derek Newell. Quarterback is Rennie Gash. Fullback, Carlos Daniels. He is dinged up as well. Broke his ankle in week number eight. Just coming back from that, Jason Kennedy. And uh, Derek Newell rounding out the starting offensive lineup for Farrell. So there's uh, the Farrell coaching staff, and uh, we're about ready to get up. We'll uh, put the uh, Southern Columbia defense up uh, here momentarily, but we're getting ready for the opening kickoff. Well, here it is, Southern Columbia very quick. Mark Sicily, he's the hammer up front, along with Jason Crawford, Gary Stein, Chuck Kowalczyk. Uh, this is the uh, basic signature of this defense. Joe Murphy starts at outside linebacker for Rico Rossini. Mark Yurkowicz, uh, he's going to start a tailback on the offensive side. Scott Bloom will call their name. This is where they have maybe a vulnerable spot in the secondary today. All new players. Nick Rossini, though, an all-state candidate back there. And Mike Myers, who didn't start playing football until a few years ago. They are the two guys to keep an eye on for Southern Columbia in the secondary. And we are ready for the kickoff. These two teams battled a year ago, six to nothing. Farrell winning it on a 26-yard run by the since-graduated Stanley Kennedy. But his brother is here today to take up the load, Jason Kennedy, and what a year he's had. And we'll discuss his story here in a moment. That's right, Jason Kennedy replaced Carlos Daniels when he went down with that broken leg and had a very good solid season. About 44 carries, well over 600 yards for a nice average for Jason Kennedy, brother of Stan Kennedy, who scored the only touchdown in last year's single-A championship game between these two teams, Southern Columbia and Farrell. Mark Osavala, he is only a freshman, 5'11", 215 pounder. He will do the kickoff for Southern Columbia. And, and they're gonna keep the ball dry down there. We've little bit of a minor delay. Gary, one thing, uh, when you get into this situation, you're waiting for the opening kickoff. All the hype, waiting in the room, pounding around a little bit. Your time has finally come. Uh, where are your emotions right now? Where are you at? Well, I think for all coaches right now, you're trying to check those emotions and make sure that everyone stays focused on the game. Focus becomes most important, and you can see Southern Columbia getting together right now because they've been focused for too long, and they want to all go back over right now and get a team focused together, and I think that's what you have to do. And as a coach, you want to show leadership, but get your team focused. For Farrell, I think Farrell operates on emotion a lot, 
but they certainly stayed focused last year. One of the things we'll look at this afternoon defensively, Jed, and I know you and Mark will talk about it, is how well they stay home against that Delaware wing tee that's been so effective for Southern Columbia. That's right. That's going to be a very big point in this ball game. Uh, Coach Lou Falcone says his Steelers like to stay home. That's the defense he teaches, he preaches, and he said, you can't let this Southern Columbia team with that wing tee get the corner and pick up positive yardage, and that is going to be the key to this ball game. Chico Penkins and DeMar Marco Wilder will go deep now for Farrell. Farrell loves to hit you with a big play. We'll talk about how Farrell has won so many close encounters to get here. What a road they have traveled. I mean, they have trailed in every game so far in the PIAA playoffs. Marco Savala, he's doing the kickoff. His brother was here a year ago as a senior quarterback, and we are underway. Short, high kick. Fielded eye the up man. That's going to be Khalil Cotton, and he's got pretty good field position up to about the 28-yard line. Tackle is made by Eric Steffen, sophomore, 5'11", 170 pounds. Well, nothing subtle about uh, Farrell's offense. What they love to do, they've got a first-year starter at quarterback, and that is Rennie Gash, and he loves to get outside. And there's one great thing. When you run the option, you need courage, and he holds the ball to the last possible instant. Yeah, he sure does. In fact, uh, uh, Farrell head coach Lou Falcone he said sometimes he holds onto it too long but he said he's a tremendous athlete and really makes things happen on the football field good instance Marino Harris into the game he's going to get the first call off tackle has a hole has three or four yards across the 30 to about the 32 yard line and he is going to be hit and dropped by Joe Murphy getting his first start at outside linebacker Scott Bloom and on the stop as well for Southern Columbia Second down, we'll call it six, opening minute. Well, here you see Marino Harris busting through the line of scrimmage, and Jed, that is where that game is going to be won or lost for either one of these teams, right there between the tackles. You heard Jim Roth say before the game that he didn't think his offensive and defensive lines were physical enough last year. That's why they lost. Going to run wide for the first time. For Farrell, the carrier, Jason Kennedy. We'll call his name an awful lot to about the 38-39. Scott Bloom and Joe Murphy converging on the stop for Southern Columbia. Also there is Gary Stein. Yeah, that was more or less a gang tackle. Jason Crawford, also the defensive tackle coming over here. You're going to see him a lot today. Big number 78. He's 285 pounds, six foot two. He's a senior. In fact, Coach Jim Roth says... This Southern Columbia offensive line may be the biggest and the best in the state at the Class A level. Well, we mentioned they are the signature of this particular Eastern Championship run for the Tigers. Third and a short two now for Farrell. Handoff, second man through, looks to be Kennedy for the first down. Well, that's what Farrell likes to do. Move the chains, establish tempo, establish the run, and that's what they're doing there. Nothing fancy about this play. They just Carlos Daniel on the carry here, Mark. Go straight ahead. Over there, right side of the line, it's James Pulliam, number 56, Dante Newell, number 75, opening up the hole. Good enough for a first down. The initial first down of the ball game just into the single-A championship game from Altoona, no score. Well, that was Jason Kennedy on the carry. The ball sits at the 41-yard line, opening possession of the football game. Both teams still trying to establish, goes to Daniels. He's been playing sparingly since week eight. He missed, what, four or five weeks, broke his ankle in week eight. Here he is, back again in the state championship game to the 46-yard line. And again, the surge they're getting up front has to please the Farrell coaching staff early. They're getting excellent first down yardage. Second and six, that's that's a nice position to be in. First, uh, first down, they pick up four. A nice hole opened up on the left side of the line this time. And Ernie Somerset and Sim Harrison gain of four on the play. It'll be second and six at the 45. I formation now behind Gash. First man through looks to be... You I believe Marino stop. Harris. Harris, a Don't very short start. game. Don't start third down. Okay, we're going to look at the play here. You see that hole closes very, very quickly. Number 26. That's Joe Murphy on the outside Joe Murphy again. Coming up from yeah his outside linebacker spot to really snuff that play out. Now, one thing you don't want is your secondary to be one of your leading tacklers. That's, That's not the right. case with Southern Columbia. <laughs> Roaring in with a record of 12 and 2. Farrell is 12 and 1. Third down and four. First dicey cover of the afternoon for Farrell. Option play. Ready, Gash. Try to get to the outside. Not going to get there. 
Great play, Matt Bubness, sophomore, 6'1", 170 pounder, stayed home and snuffed him out. That was an excellent play by Matt Bubness. Like you said, Jed, look at him, he's coming home, staying home. Rennie Gash really has nowhere to go. Very good defense. Budness comes in, finishes off the tackle. Scott Bloom right there, swarming around the ball as well out of his linebacker spot. And Farrell is forced to punt. Doing the punting is going to be Louis Falcone, coach's son. He's a junior. Watch Joe Murphy. He's the deep man. He's a home run threat. High chip shot kick. Bubnus, fair catch, 32-yard line. Good field position for Southern Columbia. Well, Gary, they kept it for a couple of first downs. Southern Columbia's defense holds. Now we get to see what Southern Columbia is all about, Gary. We talked with Jim Roth before the game. Nothing subtle. They almost point out who they're going to hand it off. It's mano against mano, utilizing that offensive line of course we're going to see a lot of scott bloom we just saw him make a fine play out of his linebacker spot but he's a very good tailback 1272 yards 23 tds for southern columbia this year out of his tailback position mark yurkowitz he's in for rico rossini he's a sophomore handoff scott bloom tries to cut it up the middle absolutely nothing there what a tackle that is sean adams Check that Dante Newell, six foot, 240 pounder. Well, Newell is probably one of the best defenders you're going to find. Small school, single A, a lot of Division One people are after him, and you can see why. I mean, he was just exploded over the line of scrimmage. Well, that's right. Dante Newell absolutely wrecked that play for Southern Columbia. But uh, Dante Newell and his gang up front, they're going to have their work cut out for them. It's a very heavy Southern Columbia offensive line. We'll talk about that as the game goes on. Delaware wing team. Next later, he's the sophomore. Hand off to Murphy, looks to get to the outside. Murphy's got the corner, and that closes off at about the 38-yard line. In on the stop for Farrell that time, Lamar Claiborne, another sophomore. And here's that offensive line of Southern Columbia. Mark Sisley, 250 pounds. Mark Madera, 200 pounds. Chuck Kowachik, he's 215. Steve Marinick is 225. And big Jason Crawford, number 78, we're going to see a lot of him today. Six foot two, 285 pounds. Line average is over 235 pounds, and it's one of the best in the state. Big change. Mark Yurkowitz right there in place of Rico Rossini. More than 1,700 yards and 27 touchdowns out of the lineup today for Southern Columbia. Climbing underneath seven minutes to go in the opening quarter. It is third and six now for the Tigers, and I think Farrell got a little anxious up front. Yeah, I believe one of the linebackers creeped into the neutral zone. Might have been James Jason Kennedy. Just stuck his head right over the line of scrimmage. Yeah. Well, third and six becomes third and one here all of a sudden, and your option's certainly a little more plentiful. Go ahead, yeah, Jason Kennedy trying to come on the blitz, and you know, Lou Step Falcone, the... On the defense, still third down. Lou still Falcone, down. the Farrell coach, told us prior to the game that He's well aware of the fact that Southern Columbia has a sophomore quarterback, and they're going to try to do a lot of things. With that Blitz defensive and stunt. line right there. That's exactly right. Blitz, Blitz and stunt these guys to try to confuse the young sophomore, Nick Slater. Murphy's your motion man on third down and one. Yerkowitz first carry for the first down. Lunging forward to the 48-yard line, a gain of five. Good. Right good. over the big center that Oh, time. yeah, and a good lead block, too, by Mike Madera. Mark Madera, rather, the left guard. Look at him clear out this hole. And Yurkovich, he just follows his line as, uh, as they plow forward, picking up a gain of about four. They only needed one, first and ten. The ball approaching midfield at the 48-yard line. 6-23 and counting, no score in the single-A championship game as of yet. Well, Nick Slater, he's a sophomore. He won a battle in the preseason with Zach Knorr, and I think we've got our first time out Southern Columbia a little bit confused. And they'll talk things over. But, you know, you talk about Farrell, how they got here, Mark. What a story that is. And uh, before we get to that, we want to uh, remind you that this broadcast is being underwritten by the dairy farmers of the Pennsylvania Dairy Promotion Program who remind you that your body needs strong muscles, steady nerves, and quick energy to compete in today's athletics. Your body needs the right fuel. Got any milk? Let's talk a little bit about Farrell, how they got here. They've trailed in every game so far in the postseason in the PIAA round. This is a team that believes if they are around the hunt in the fourth quarter mark that they it's winning time for them. Yeah, they sure do. Uh, uh, they are true and 
tested. They're, they're a tried and tested team, and, and Lou Falcone likes that about his club. Uh, they do play all four quarters. Uh, uh, contrary to Southern Columbia, Coach Jim Roth has, uh, has elected to sit some of his starters uh, midway through the third quarter many times. And here you're looking at some of the Farrell defense. These are the defensive backs. They may not be too busy today. Neither one of these teams throw the ball very much. Benny Gash, of course, he's the quarterback. He's starting at one of the safeties. Number five, Derek Newell. DeMarco Wilder is the cornerback. As well as Chico Pinkins and Louis Falcone. Pinkins returned a fumble, 76 yards for a touchdown last week in the 14-12 win, or 14-10 win against Sean and Valley. Hand off, Yerkowitz, nudged down at midfield. And he may have fumbled. They're saying he coughed it up, but they say the ground's there. No big deal. Right at midfield, only a gain of two. Well, we knew that both lines would look to try and establish this thing early. So far, advantage defense. Absolutely. This is the kind of ball game it's going to be. A lot of stuff between the tackles. Second and eight now. Might see him throw here with Matt Bubnas into the football game. He's down to the bottom of your screen right there. Next Slater, sophomore quarterback. Full house stack behind him. Double handoff. Bloom to the outside. They stayed home and got him. Big loss back at the 43. Sim Harrison. Right up that defensive front. You want to talk about a surge. Sim Harrison almost took the handoff that time. A double handoff. He sure did. I'll tell you what. Sim Harrison got into that backfield in a hurry. Wrapped his arms around Scott Bloom. Put him down. But uh, Sim Harrison just shed his blocker almost immediately. Got into that backfield. And I'll tell you what. The Delaware wing tee. Excellent athletes. Uh, you have to have to operate that uh, type of offense. in Southern Columbia. Obviously very confident in the operation of that offense. So even... When there's obvious disaster and Sim Harrison right there, credit Scott Bloom for hanging on to the ball and not really not coughing it up back there. They love to utilize the backfields out of the pass. Later rolling under the gun, looking, looking on the move. Intercepted by Kennedy. Kennedy step around, move all the way up to the Southern Columbia 42-yard line. Again, when you throw against the grain, usually bad things happen, and it does there. Yeah. Interception barrel. That's right. Southern Columbia hasn't had too much luck throwing the ball through the air lately. Last week against Shenandoah Valley. And here you'll see throwing against the grain across his body, looking for a receiver who was well covered. And Farrell's defense picks it up. Number nine, the linebacker, Jason Kennedy, following the quarterback, Nick Slater, all the way. Last week against Shenandoah Valley, Slater threw just four times. Two of them were intercepted. 4.46 now in the opening quarter. The game's first big break goes to the Steelers of Farrell. I formation. They'll hand it off this time to Kennedy. Sticks his head down and climbs across the 40-yard line. Scott Bloom got him first, cleaning up Joe Murphy afterwards. Gary Sutton, talk about the first turnover. If you're a coach, you want to make them pay. I think absolutely you want to try to jump on it right away. Of course, this team's not going to jump on it with the pass. It's going to be with the ground game. But you really sense down here in the field also at the moment, Jed, if I might add to that, that this is a, just a continuation of last year's game. You almost feel the same kind of role so far, the same kind of tendencies we saw last year. Back up to you. Into the game, Marino Harris. He has his fist on the turf. Gash, step around, move, has big yardage, has five. Across the 30 and a Farrell first down to the 29-yard line as he winds forward. Again, something out of nothing. If you're a coach, he'll drive you out of your mind, but he makes plays. Scott and you Bloom. see why here, why his athletic ability is why he's a starting quarterback. Hey, absolutely. It was great athletic ability. He saw the hole. He's a good, heady quarterback. Scott Bloom, the linebacker, over-pursued a little bit. Nick Rossini came out of his uh, safety spot, and uh, he over-pursued a little bit, opening up the hole for the quarterback. Renny Gash just took it upfield for positive yardage. Good first down yardage. It'll be first and 10. The ball at the Southern Columbia 29. Gash gains seven. Handoff going to be Harris. Quick hitter up the middle. Harris, tough run to the 24-yard line. Gain of five. Well, they're throwing Nichols down on first down. Big stat in any football game. Yeah. Average yards on first down. Usually has impact on the scoreboard. And again, look at the surge. They're getting up front here, Mark. And first down is obviously critical. Look at this surge. The game's going to be won and lost in the offensive line. Can't stress that enough. But uh, great, great gains on first down. That is highly important, especially when you tend to run the ball and really don't throw through the air. Uh, you don't want a third and eight situation. Three wide receiver set now for Farrell. Handoff goes to Kennedy, and he winds forward. Not much room there. Gary Stein in on the stop again. 
Well, again, they don't throw the football that much. They've only thrown it 103 times heading into this game. They've only completed 38. They're going to see Jason Kennedy pop the line of scrimmage. Stein was right there to greet him for Southern Columbia. Gary Stein out of his defensive end spot, pinched in, made the stop. Good play. Gain of only two. It'll be third and four for Farrell. 240 and counting left in this first quarter. It's been a fast first quarter. No score. Farrell with the best scoring opportunity of the day. But the big play coming up. Third and four at the Southern Columbia 23. You'd think, though, that they are in two down country this deep in there. Back goes Gash looking. Now throws. Has a man. Pinkins for the first down. And he steps forward. Still on his feet to the five. Pinkins touchdown. Chico Pinkins. Did he step out of bounds? No. Farrell is on the board with 2.17 left in the opening quarter. What a play by Pinkins after the catch. I'm not really sure how Chico Pinkins wiggled out of these tacklers along the sideline. There you see the throw from the quarterback, Rennie Gash. The wide open Pinkins, and now he just shakes one tackler. And there's Bloom and Murphy, the wow. linebackers for Southern Columbia. <laughs> and everybody had a crack at Chico Pinkins, but he dances down the sideline into the end zone for the first score of the ball game. A Nuriyev type move with the feet around the corner here. Look at this. Look at this. He shakes the first tackle. Now here comes Bloom and Murphy, the two linebackers, and they can't wrap him up. And he's hurt. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. what they tell us. <laughs> Ready, Gash. Tap the point after, could be big, and kicked it right into the pile. Oh, all those extra points are going to be big before the day is done. Now this is smelling a lot like last year's championship game, isn't it? I believe Stan Kennedy for Farrell went into the end zone at about the two-minute mark of the first quarter, and the game ended 6-0 with Farrell walking away with the Class A championship. They cash in on the uh, Kennedy interception, five plays, 58 yards, and they use two minutes and 19 seconds, and they've got the lead 6-0. That's how the single A final ended a year ago in Farrell's favor. Well, Gary, we had always talked about the first score being very important here, and boy, Farrell made them pay after the turnover. They got it done. Well, you know, Jed, in our country, the Kennedy name is a pretty good one, but I think in Jim Ross' vocabulary right now, the Kennedy name has probably turned into a four-letter word. Jason Kennedy this year intercepts it, and then they turn in the touchdown, and you know, Pinkins, when he came over to the side, looked like he was just going to step out of bounds and all of a sudden just turned the corner and raced upfield. It was one of those where I think he put the defense to sleep and absolutely just turned it on when everybody had kind of stopped playing. Just a good athletic play, too, by Chico Pinkins to know his presence on the football field. He knew where the sidelines were, shook a couple of tackles, and had a nose for the end zone. 6 nothing. Farrell leads. This is a rare position for Farrell in the first quarter, a lead. They trailed last week 10 0 to Michonne and Valley in the Western final and came back and won there. Southern Columbia going to get it back. Deep kickoff, Joe Murphy at his own 20. Murphy, big hole, has the 30, climbs forward, good field position to the 36 yard line, and he's ganged up on there. Well, this is a big series for the Southern Columbia offense. Again, penetration by the defensive front in their first series. They've got to put that fire out or they're going to go anywhere here. Absolutely. And you want your young quarterback, Nick Slater, just settle him down. Probably uh, a lot of uh, a lot of running the ball on this on this series and hope, hope your tailbacks can get you some positive yardage and pick up a couple of first downs, get your quarterback back into the flow of the offense and calm things down a little bit. That's what Coach Jim Roth is hoping for. Mike Myers into the game along with Machowski at a wide receiver position. Full house stack, handoff going to be Bloom. Head down, nothing subtle there. Moves the pile to the 40-yard line. That's a on, tough, guys. tough Come run on, right there. No, Tackle by three. Chico Pinkins. He sure did move the pile. Nick Sim Harrison is pushed backwards. That's uh, the nature of this ball game. We knew that coming in. Good defense, good running offense. Both teams mirror one another. And here they are, all the way to Altoona for the Class A state championship. Not bad when Bloom's your second leading ground gainer. He's got more than 1,200 yards. Southern Columbia's rushed for more than 4,000 on the season. That's a scary number right there. Second and six now. Handoff right through with Joe Murphy. It flies forward. Hey, you talk about rushing the ball. Joe Murphy, the guy we it just saw. It is a Murphy, Mark. He's the one got thrown over the pile. Oh. I think that might have been Yerkowitz. Yerkowitz. Well, Joe Murphy, Scott Bloom, and the guy we're not going to see today, Rico Rossini, over the last two years, these three have rushed for, combined, over 6,500 yards. So Coach Jim Roth has had a 
very, very successful go of it with his ground game. Third and five, Matt Bubnus is on it, a wide receiver. He's been their leading receiver all year long. New quarterback, Knorr, penalty flags are down. Knorr, quarterback keeper, not much room, short of the first down, chopped out at about the 45-yard line. Kennedy in on the stop for Farrell. But a penalty flag, and I think we're going to get motion. Put a new quarterback in, running the wing tee. Somebody stepped out of place. That's exactly right. You called it. It's motion against Southern Columbia. Captain, come here. They'll take it. I mean, we've seen Jim Roth back in the first round go on fourth down deep in his own territory yeah. against Camp Hill. He's gutsy. I'll tell you what, though. spot five. Illegal motion on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat third down. Southern Columbia runs a very, very intricate offense, the Delaware wing tee. It takes precision, and it takes a lot of skill, good skill people. And obviously, Coach Jim Roth of Southern Columbia has those skill people. But sometimes when you put uh, something new into the mix, such as a new quarterback, these things will happen. I'm not so sure if Slater may not have been shaken up. Zach Knorr is in. He's seen an awful lot of time, though, this year. Right now, full house stack behind him. Single wide receiver to the far side. Now you got flags again. Nor going to throw. Has a man. Complete for the first down. Even more after the catch by Budness. All the way down to the Farrell 36. But it's coming back. I think you've got motion again on Southern Columbia. Two flags are down at the 35 and 31 yard line. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, it's big number 40. Mark Yurkovich possibly moving before the snap. Here you see. There you see the flag fly into your picture. As Nor completes the pass, nice dart into his receiver, but it's all coming back. Motion again, Five second, yards, second. Repeat third down. Wipes out a 27-yard pickup. Nor to Matt Bubnus. But one thing's for sure, they'll go back to that play before this day is done. 25 seconds remaining in the opening quarter. Third and 15 for Southern Columbia. The ball back at their own 30-yard line. One thing you don't want to do, third and long against oh. this Farrell defense. They just live to tell in this kind of situation. And especially Back when goes Knorr looking. He's going to go. He's loading long, has a man. Now they fell down, intercepted, but he's out of bounds. Yeah, third and long is an impossible situation, especially when you run the type of offense that Southern Columbia runs, and it's a very difficult uh, position to be in. We're looking for Nick Slater, and he's okay. He's just standing behind Jim Raw. Oh. Sometimes, Gary, when they do make a substitution like that, when you've started all year long, sometimes seeing the action helps you on the field. That's probably where Jim Roth's at there. I think one of the things he was trying to do there was to make sure that if he threw the ball downfield, it was in bounds, it was almost going to be like a punt. Well, it didn't work out that way. The ball was absolute, absolutely out of bounds. But uh, now you come up with a fourth down, you got to kick it away. And I'll tell you, if anything can happen with this Farrell team, they are a wild bunch when they get the ball. Good pickup by Murphy. Boy, he hit the side of his foot. Still going to take a positive roll for Southern Columbia. And it is down by Nick Rossini at about the 38-yard line, and that'll end the first quarter of play. Farrell with a 6 to nothing advantage on Southern Columbia and a rematch in the title tilt in single A. Let's go to Gary Sutton. Gary, uh, cold but comfortable here in Altoona for single A today. Well, one of the things that Southern Columbia has been trying to do all day is to move number 56, James Pulliam, who is the nose guard, away from where they're going to run. So far, they've not been able to neutralize him, and you can see what's happened first quarter offensively. Southern Columbia just has not been able to get anything going. And as you said about Farrell, a rather unusual position to be in, in the fact that they're leading. They seem to save that for Southern Columbia every year. The rest of the year is spent trying to catch up win those unbelievable games, not with Southern Columbia. They seem to really have their number, at least so far. Back Marks up to you guys. This broadcast being underwritten by the Dairy Farmers of the Pennsylvania Dairy Promotion Program. To remind you that hard work and good nutrition will improve your performance in the classroom and on the field. You need the right ingredients in your training program. Got any milk? Glad to have them with us for the single-A final as well. Some of the numbers from the opening quarter, downright frightening. Southern Columbia trailing 6-0. What's the rest of the math story? Well, the number that has to concern head coach Jim Roth, Southern Columbia, six rushing yards. And Southern Columbia is certainly not going to win a ball game with uh, a light total such as that. 36 yards rushing for Farrell, 23 yards passing for a total offensive output in the first quarter. 59 yards for the Steelers. Meanwhile, 
Farrell's side of the ball, six yards rushing, no yards passing. Total output in the first quarter, six for Southern Columbia. Carlos Daniel into the ball game. Lou Falcone told us we need something out of Daniel before the day is done. Handoff goes to Jefferson, and he's got the 42-yard line. Murphy, Bloom are on him. For Southern Columbia, also in on the stop is going to be Eric Steffen, the sophomore. Two, second down. Well, again, I think, you know, you talk line surge a little bit. Advantage Farrell, some of those numbers you talked about, Southern Columbia, the turnover, cost them points. Right, all right. It's, uh, they haven't really been able to mount an offensive drive. They uh, uh, really haven't uh, been able to sustain any one drive. Well, Jason Kennedy, he'll dot the eye. Rennie Gash, he's the quarterback. Ooh, Gash thought about it, now throws it up the middle. It's almost caught. The drop, Nick Rossini. Check that, Jason Majowski with a sensational play. Oh, I'll tell you what, it's a good thing Jason Majowski slapped that ball away from the intended receiver because he had no help back there. The safety, Nick Rossini came in on a, flying in on a blitz, and uh, he didn't get to the quarterback, but there were some wide open spaces there. It was a good read by Farrell quarterback Rennie Gash, but it was an excellent play by Jason Majowski because if that ball would have gotten through, it might have been six. Well, he almost had Louis Falcone on the run in stride. And, boy, he was really in open spaces after the catch. And he made it third and six at the 42-yard line. Pitch back. Going to go to Kennedy. He's got an escort service out in front. But Southern Columbia, hey, we play the run every day. We're used to seeing that. And they stump it. <laughs> yeah. Scott Bloom came from his linebacker spot, fought through a blocker. And, boy, he just laid a hit on... Uh, on the running back from Farrell. Here you see the pitch taken by Jason Kennedy. And look at Bloom come in there from the left. He just wrecks that play, stops. Kennedy gets some help from his teammates. That's a gain of only a couple. A little bring up fourth down. Bloom and only four. 170 pounds. Tough, oh. tough player, though. He sure is. Fours are wild. Fourth and four at 44. 10 40 left here in the second quarter. Six nothing. Farrell, they're going to call a timeout. Boy, that tell you, some of. Some of the mental things, you know, you try and get, shake the cobwebs a little bit, even though you, you are somewhat familiar. They only have 10 on the field. You can, 10 people on the field, as you heard down there, our field microphone. Gary, what are your impressions so far? I mean, Southern Columbia really has not been able to establish anything on offense, but on defense, they've managed to put the fire out with the exception of the touchdown pass, but they can't stay out there all day because they'll wear out after a while. Well, my impressions so far are very simply this, that we just picked up where we left off last year. We got the street lock game going, and Farrell's got it all their way. Their defense is very, very disciplined. Their offense is about as wild as you're going to get. It's about the tale of two cities here as far as Farrell's concerned. An offense that likes to get it going. We saw the broken play with the quarterback. They don't pass the ball very often. They would have had six a moment ago, but hadn't been for Majeski. Defensively, they are maybe one of the most disciplined teams you'll ever see. But one of the keys, and I mentioned it early, and we might focus on it with our cameras, number 56, James Pulliam. When Southern Columbia goes on offense, James Pulliam is the guy they want to try to block away and then go opposite of him all afternoon. They have not been able to do that thus far. So it's all in Farrell down here. That's my impression. That's right. James Pulliam is number 56. He's the nose guard. We'll focus on that during the next series. High end over end punt. Mike Meyer steps past the 30, has five, has 10, and creamed at the 37-yard line. I mean, crushed by Marino Harris. Pops Oof. right up, pops right up, running back over to the sidelines. Mike Myers, here he's fielding the punt. He's a guy who never played football until this year. The coach, Jim Ross, convinced him to come out for the sport. He played basketball, he played golf, track, baseball, but uh, never football. But he comes out senior year, likes it, starting for a team that's playing for the single-A champion. You play in traffic like that much longer, you're probably going to look at those other options, Mark. I mean, he took a while. <laughs> Nick Slater back into the game, sophomore quarterback. The motion man is Bloom. Bloom gets the handoff, trying to get to the outside. Farrell stays home. There's just no room at all for him to roam. He may have lost a yard or two back at the 35. Boy, they are just really getting after it. There's that man again, Jason Kennedy. He's got the interception, which led to the only score in this football game, number nine on your screen right there. And they are just blowing by. Well, Scott Bloom was trying to follow the block of his right, left guard, Steve Marinick. And uh, Marinick had his man stood up, but there was a lot of traffic in there. Jason Kennedy at the linebacker spot snuck through and snuffed out the run. Brian Breach, sophomore, into the game at a wide receiver spot. Full house back. Now the motion. Man, Bloom again. Quick handoff up the middle. Yurkowitz to the 41. Not much room. A gain of four. 
Third and seven upcoming now for Southern Columbia. It's been third and seven, third and eight, third and 11. Gary Sutton, what do you got for us down there? Well, really, Farrell has thrown up a wall here. And, and before the game, we talked with Jim Roth. He said last year he was not able to punch the kind of holes in there that his runners could get through. He thought even with Yerkowitz today, if they can get the holes, they can get through. So far, that has been an impervious wall that Farrell has thrown up. Slater back to pass, might be motion again. Make it Zach Knorr on the run, throws, broken up by Kennedy. I mean, textbook stuff at the 49-yard line. Hand in front of the receiver, making Chinko Pinkins on the coverage. Boy, again, you can't play a, a man better than what Pinkins just did here. Look at this quarterback, Zach Knorr goes out on the roll, looking for his receiver. And look at Pinkins, Pinkins, looking at Knorr the whole time. Times his uh, dive, slaps the ball down to the ground, but there's a flag decline, on the play. They're going to decline as he hurt on the field, and that'll be fourth and seven Offense, now. decline, 41 yard fourth line. down. Be an interesting call now. He's going to punt. See Joe Murphy coming back on now for the Tigers. Keep in mind, whenever you have a skill guy, they'll punting, Mark. Yeah. That's a little anxiety back there. You never know. That's exactly right. You, you have that option of uh, not punting the ball and then trying to execute a play. Absolutely right. Don't think Lou Falcone, the Farrell head coach, doesn't realize that. Louis Falcone and Chico Pinkins will drop deep. Murphy at about his own 28-yard line. Pretty good snap. Oh, they almost got there. Sim Harrison had his arms in the air. He might have kicked it right through his armpit. Yeah, I don't I know mean, how. He was all over it. <laughs> I don't know how Sim Harrison did not get a piece of that. In fact, he may have gotten a little bit of that ball. Harrison had his arms in the air. Might, might have just kicked it right underneath him. Yeah, he, he just may have. There you see the time in your upper left-hand corner of your screen. 9.05 to go in this first half of play. It's 6-0, Farrell, on the strength of a 58-yard five-play drive. It culminated in a 23-yard pass from Renny Gash. Chico Pinkins, extra point was missed, and that's where this ball game's at. Last year ended 6-0. But well, Gary's right about talking about continuous, continuing game. It's like the sixth quarter, if you will. <laughs> Second quarter this time around. Stan Kennedy scored at about the same time in the ball game for Farrell last year to win the single A championship for the Steelers. Pitch back going to be Penkins. He's strung out and then chopped down. Tackle is going to be made for Southern Eagle Columbia Eagle by Eagle Mike Harris. Myers. Also helping out for the Tigers is going to be Chuck Kowalczyk, 5'11", 215-pound junior. Well, one thing about Southern Columbia, they're all sophomores, they're all juniors, they're all disciplined. Staying home again on the run here. Yeah, they sure are, and they did a great job of stringing that out. As Myers came up from a safety spot to help out on the tackle. Well, both coaches are pacing around their respective sidelines going, mm, boy, I'd love to run the football today. So far, not much room to roam. Rennie Gash, he's an exciting player under center, the quarterback. He's going to roll out. Kennedy maybe getting the pitch. Gash turns the corner and gets to the 31 and ridden out of bounds beautifully up there by Matt Bubnas. Again, Bubnas, run contained. That's what we see a lot of now. Well, Gary, that's been a trend on all levels. Let's go from college down to the high school level a little bit. Mark, you can describe this. You stay at home, put eight guys in the box, and say, all right, come and get us. That's right. Matt Bubnis comes out of his corner position and makes the tackle. They strung it out once again. Good job by the line and the linebackers sending the quarterback, Rennie Gash, to the far side of the field while Bubnis comes up from his quarterback spot and makes the tackle. Gary, and that's been the key. Your secondary people must be able to stop the run and stay home. Well, your secondary people don't have to worry about the pass. I think, as you so adeptly mentioned a moment ago, so you can come up constantly and stuff the run constantly. Someone's going to have to pass the ball a little bit, maybe just some short routes to try to open this game up. Well, they may have taken too much time on third and six. Let's wait. Delay of game, Farrell. They'll make it third and 11 now, so they'll march it back to the 25-yard line. There you see some of this good crowd. Very comfortable. I mean, Gary, you know, when we talked about the field in pregame, I mean, I think the track is very fast. They started working on it, as you said, early this morning. And, you know, it's Pennsylvania. It's December. Get it on. It's good conditions here today. And apparently we don't have Gary up, so we'll just go back to him. We'll further that theory for you. It's third and 11 at the 25-yard line. 8.15 to go. Gash is back. Pocket collapses. Now he's going to run around, improvise a little bit, and down in a heap at the 28-yard line. 
Nick Rossini in on the stop. Also there for Southern Columbia is going to be Steve Mayernick. He's only 5'9", but carries 225 pounds to the table and converges here. Yeah, here you're going to see Rennie Gash, and uh, he, he picks a hole, but it closes very quickly. Here comes Joe Murphy. There's Scott Bloom, and wrapping him up and bringing him down. And that's what Lou Falcone was telling us before the game, the head coach at Farrell. He says, sometimes our quarterback, Rennie Gash, hangs on to the ball too long, wants to do a little too much on the field rather than just going down. And that time, nearly fumbled the ball. Falcone will punt, looks at it, and then steps into it. Rossini up. First man in there and a good return for Mike Myers all the way to the Farrell 46 yard line and they've got excellent field position to work with with 728 as you see to go in the second quarter. Now let's go to Gary Sutton. Gary, the track looks fast. Well, you know, <laughs> field down here, great shape. You want to get out here very quickly, get into your huddle very quickly. You know, I'm struck by the fact with Farrell, just as far as another impression, Farrell makes their mistakes on offense. They don't make mistakes on defense. Watch the discipline as we step up here defensively right now with Farrell. Ball marked back at the 47-yard line. It's a veer wing T type of attack for Southern Columbia. Slater gets Bloom. Big hole for the first time. But it chopped down in a hurry. Jason Kennedy again. Boy, it looked like Bloom had a crack. But no, he's Kennedy there to protect it at strong safety. Number nine there on your television screen, Jason Kennedy is having an excellent game out of the linebacker spot. Here you see the handoff to Bloom. They're running away from the middle guard. They're trying to block down on James Pulliam. And here comes Jason Kennedy, snakes through and makes the tackle. Gain of just three on the play, at least second and seven. Eight men in the box now for Farrell on defense. Quick handoff, Yurkowitz. Big hold up the middle, has a first down and more and climbs to the Farrell 28-yard line. Rips a 15-yard gain off left tackle that time. And Southern Columbia is marching closer now. Yeah, Mark Sicily, Mark Madera. Open up a nice hole on that side. Big quick hitter, big gain. Well, First they said, ten. Jim Roth did anyway, before the game. Yurkowitz, yeah, it's a little bit of a step down from Rossini, but if he has room, he will make them pay. Southern Columbia fans now come into their feet on the far side. 6.30 to go. Yurkowitz stays in. Handoff going to be Joe Murphy. He's got his second carry, and it's a muscle, muscle job to about the 24-yard line. Gain of four. Joe Tackle Murphy. Sim Harrison again. Boy, he's been all over the place. He sure has. Sim Harrison, a fine defensive tackle, 5'10", 230 pounds. He's a senior. And there you see Sim Harrison in his collision with Joe Murphy. Wrestles him to the ground. That'll bring up a second and six situation. End off. Murphy, uh-uh. Sim Harrison. Again. Whirls him down to the 26. Looks a lot like Lawrence Taylor there, doesn't he? He comes out of that. Uh, Check that, the tackle for Farrell, Mark. He looks James Pulliam. You talk about him, bad shoulder. Wow. Oh, yeah, James oh. Pulliam is the guy that Jim Roth, the Southern Columbia coach, said that they were going to key on. They're going to block down on James Pulliam. And Pulliam's coming into this game a little bit dinged up. He's got shoulder problems throughout much of the later seat part of the season. But, boy, he didn't look 100% healthy on that play as he snuffed out the run. One for four, Southern Columbia on third down, looking at third and seven. Slater play action, looking, throwing, has a man in the corner, caught, touchdown! What a catch that is by the tight end, Rob Yankoski. We are tied with 5.16 to go in the second quarter. There you, see the fake. Here. there you see the play fake and a beautiful pass just over the outstretched arms of the defender. And Rob Yankowski, the tight end, comes down with it. 50-50 ball battling with Rennie Gash. And I'll tell you what, Mark, he caught it awkwardly yep. and still reached for it that, and got it. It was, it was a nice grab, good concentration by the receiver because the, the cornerback is right in his face. The safety's coming over. He knows he's got a busy situation developing, and he makes the catch nonetheless. But excellent play by Southern Columbia. Nick Slater for the lead, and it is no good. He hooked it right. Well, the kicking game cancels each other out. We're right back where we started. 6-6 six, six with 5-16 to go. Well, 
Gary, both these teams like to run. Talk about a sense of irony. Two touchdown passes are scores here in the opening half. Well, if you can't win by land, then you go by air. I think that's one if by land and two if by air in this case. And Slater was the happiest guy on the field, Jed. One of the interesting things that Mark and I talked about before the game was that Slater has kind of a long windup before he throws the ball. Well, that was one of the few times that Farrell really didn't come and blitz. And it gave Slater the kind of time he needed to find his man in the end zone for the touchdown and tie this one up. Well, Southern Columbia, that's a big, gritty drive right there. Gary, you know, you sensed new life after the 15-yard gain that time by Yurkowitz in that drive that got him deep. Now, Yurkowitz, just a sophomore, took that quick handoff and busted through, picked up 15, got him down into deep into Farrell territory at the 28. And from there, two plays later, a 25-yard touchdown pass from Slater to Yankowitz. And we are tied. 6-6, six, six, extra point, no good once again. 5-16 left to go in this first half of play from Altoona's Mansion Park. You're watching the single-A championship game, PIAA. Five-play, 46-yard drive for Southern Columbia. They cashed in on the field position. High end over end kick, going to be Harris at his own 20. Harris lunges forward to the 32-yard line, and Leather collides there. Nick Rossini in on the stop. Also there is going to be Jason Machowski for Southern Columbia, and I think he's shaken up a little bit. He took one right off the side of the arm, and he's going to go off the field now for the Tigers. He's holding his left wrist, I believe, as he steps off. So if he's okay. That could be a huge development for Southern Columbia. Jason Machowski, Machowski he, he batted down a pass that looked to be a short touchdown. It was an excellent play from his quarterback spot, so... He could ill afford to lose. Fine play of Jason Majowski. Rennie Gash, the quarterback. Oh, ball is loose. Ball still loose. And let's see who's got it. I think Southern Columbia has covered it. There's a big stack up. And now I think there's a wrestling match underneath. Southern Columbia did not recover, I don't believe. In on the recovery for Farrell is Jason Kennedy to save the day at the 29. Boy, everything was going wrong with this play. It sure was. And one of the players, I'm not sure who, there it is, number nine, was actually laying on the ball. Didn't really know that he, uh, the ball was underneath, and that was Eric Steffen who came in on the blitz out of his uh, cornerback spot. He is uh, filling in for Jason Majowski. I think when Renny Gash pulled out, he stepped on Pulliam, or Pulliam stepped on his foot, and the ball came flying. 4.23 to go in the opening half. Pitch goes to Kennedy, trying to get to the outside. Now cuts forward and sliced down to the 33, 34 yard line. Well, that's a tough run, but you know, not much room to work with up the field right now. I'll tell you, both these defenses used to covering the run in practice. Come on, they're falling over each other. Nobody's doing anything funny. <laughs> you gotta love that on the field. Nobody's doing anything funny. Gary Stein. In on the stop that time for Southern Columbia. Third and long. Two timeouts to work with for that Southern Columbia coaching staff. They'd love to get another shot at that end zone before we go to the break. Chico Pinkins into the game at a wide receiver spot. Zach Norr will pick him up single coverage down to the bottom of your screen there. Gash going to roll, going to look. Has nowhere to go. Flags fly. Might be a hold against Farrell that time. Again, Southern Columbia in on the tackle. Joe Murphy again. Yeah, it looks like it's a hold behind the play, possibly. Holding against Farrell. They're going to decline it and create fourth and long. Right in there, yeah, right in the middle there's of the screen. A, there's the hole. Yeah. Penalties decline. Fourth down. Number 73 for Southern Columbia. Went That's Madera, right there. He was he was being held. Well, Louis Falcone, uh, rather. Louis Falcone. Falcone. He's only 5'7", 160 pounds. He's going to be kicking deep to Mike Myers. It's gone! Steps forward, high end over end kick. Myers steps back to his own 35. Forward to about the 39, and a flag He's comes here. down. Might be an illegal block this time against Southern Columbia. Yeah, by where the, the flag came from, it looks to be behind the play. Clipping Southern Columbia. That's 15 yards. That'll hurt him. There you see the illegal block. See number 80 for Southern Columbia. Rossini, Lock in the back. All 
15 from Referee the spot. Referee is right there in front of it to throw the flag. Flip, going to run back. Gary, one yard thing I've noticed, uh, you know, with a lot of these penalties and everything, I mean, it's, uh, I don't think these teams are as mentally crisp as each coach would like in this opening half. We turn Gary up there. I mean, we'll just leave him on and join us at uh, Will. 304, 6 6 the score. Two timeouts for Southern Columbia deep in their own territory at their own 21 yard line. Double wide receiver set now. Murphy and Bubnas. Handoff going to be Yurkowitz. Yurkowitz forward to about the 23 yard line. Yurkowitz, he's a strong kid. He's five foot eight, 160 pounds, but I have a feeling he's going to be doing some growing. He's just a sophomore. So he's got a couple more years under. Coach Jim Roth and his fine program at Southern Columbia. Six carries, 31 yards for Mark Yurkowitz, Southern Columbia, leading rusher on the day. Two guys having a whale of an afternoon for Farrell are Sim Harrison, James Pulliam, Dante Newell. Full house stack behind Slater, the sophomore quarterback, looking at second and seven. Slater play action, not going to give it off Bubness. Does he get blocking to the outside? I don't think so. Farrell is all over him at about the 22-yard line. Stay at home? Everybody was home. You read my mind. This defense just uh, executed as, about as well as you could. Uh, Lou Falcone, the head coach, and Farrell has to be very, very happy with how his defense reacted to that play. Uh, they didn't bite. They saw what was coming. Stayed home. Got the pursuit going, chased him out of bounds. Lost on the play. It'll be third and eight for Southern Columbia. 217 left to go in this first half of play. We're tied at six. Dante Newells, Carlos Daniel in on the stop. Third and eight. Southern Columbia looking to move the chains. Slater play action. Now rolling, looking, has a man thrown pass. Caught first down to the 38. What a catch that is by Machowski upfield. Make it Bubnas. He had to stretch for this one, Mark. And you 50, know what? 50 in the air. It looks like the young quarterback, Nick Slater, has his confidence back after a first quarter interception. There you see Slater waiting for his receiver to break off his pattern and find some open spaces. He lofted a high one that the defense could not get. Only his receiver was in the neighborhood. Good pass, good catch, first down. Play action again for Slater. Throws this time. For the tight end, Yankoski, make it Murphy up near the about 46-yard line. Couldn't hold on. That'll stop the clock, though, with a minute 55 remaining in the first half. That was kind of a dangerous pass. That thing pinballed all over the place. I think it was touched by Joe Murphy, touched by a Farrell linebacker, and maybe someone else on the way to the ground. So fell incomplete, fortunately, for Southern Columbia because there were a couple of linebackers in the vicinity who could have picked that ball off. Second and 10 now for Southern Columbia. Slater under center. He's got a lot of options, one of them being Bloom. Play action again. Now they're going to do it over a big hole. He's got five for Murphy. He's got ten and a first down. Flags fly. Might be a hold against Southern Columbia. That'll nullify a positive game up to about the 49 of Farrell. Well, this is the old Mike White, Illinois shovel right here. Yeah, the old shuttle pass right to Joe Murphy. Fakes the hand off to Yerkowitz. And then he finds Murphy. Nice hole. Look at that hole opened up by the Southern Columbia offensive line. And then uh, Murphy takes it downfield. Good enough for first down yards. However, there is a flag on the play. Should be holding against Southern Columbia. Make it another clip. Oh, that hurts. 15 yards, second down. 15 yard value, and that just nullifies. Yeah. Instead of being at the Farrell 49, you're all the way back at your own 33. Yeah, I think someone laid a clip on the Farrell linebacker, Jason Kennedy, number nine. He came into that play. Uh, Looking kind of funny. It, uh, he came in from the back end, so he obviously got hit in the back. Referees were right there to spot it. Tightly played ball game. 6-6 six, six the score. About a minute and a half to go in the first half of play. Matt Bubnas into the game at a wide receiver spot now for Southern Columbia. Back goes Slater. Play action looking downfield for Murphy. Intercepted by Chico Pickens. Pickens trying to wind and get loose. Has the 35, now he's going to try and get to the outside. Has blocking, huge block, 40. Has the 45. Penguins greatly turned all the way back to the 47-yard line. What a block at about the 35. Gain of 20 on the return for Penkins. But the big play was the block. And getting green was Yurkowitz downfield. It's going to be on your screen here momentarily, Mark. Yeah, here you go. 
quarterback, Nick Slater, just lost it way downfield, well over the head of his intended receiver. Scott Bloom, the intended receiver out of the tailback spot, fell on the play. Chico Pinkins right there. Now watch this. He runs about 50 to 60 yards in order to gain 20. One missed tackle. Look at the block right about here, here Mark. It comes. Look at it. On your Oh! Oh! <laughs> oh That's God. football. You are kidding. And he's finally brought down just across midfield into Southern Columbia territory at the 47-yard line. So that's where Farrell will set up shot, seven, first and 10. Seven. Just over a minute to go, a minute eight to go in his first half of play as Farrell in Southern Columbia locked at 6-6, vying for the PIAA Class A title. Let's go to Gary Sutton right now, Gary. Second interception of the day for the Farrell defense. Minute and eight seconds to work with. They have one timeout remaining. This is kind of a big possession in this game. You really sense now a momentum shift. Well, I think you feel a major momentum shift right now. I thought Southern Columbia maybe had taken it back and momentum was wearing a gold and white uniform. But obviously, Farrell has gotten it back here with the interception. And right now, Farrell in a position to uh, end the half. Uh, who knows? Maybe with one more score with 108 to go. Southern Columbia wanted pass interference on that last play. Didn't get it, obviously. Uh, one of those bump kind of incidental calls that uh, I guess goes your way if you're a Farrell fan right now. Back up to you guys. First and 10 at the 47 now for Farrell. Rennie Gash, the quarterback. Play action. Gash back. He's looking. Now the pocket collapses. He's still looking around. Great coverage downfield. Now has a man out there, and it's going to be caught by Tony. Five touchdown. Unbelievable play, but I think a flag is down. No flag. There is a flag. Holding. Farrell, it's coming back. Oh, that hurt. Poor Farrell. Oh, that just really kills you. Number nine, you said. A 47 yard okay, touchdown pass wiped out. Here you're going to see it. There's a hold. You know, when your quarterback scrambles around like that in the backfield, watch Jason Kennedy. Takes all kinds of time. It was number nine, Jason Kennedy, who committed the hold. Hold. Offense, 10 yard penalty spot of the foul, first down. There you go. Louis Falcone scampers Boy, into the end zone, but he's got to scamper back to the huddle because We're in the that's zone, coming yeah, back right? due to the hold on Jason Kennedy. Oof. But yeah, anytime your quarterback has that kind of time, he scampers around, and waits for his receiver to run a very long route. Chances are there's going to be a hold occurred on, occurring on somewhere on the offensive line. And that time they picked up the hold and negated a touchdown. Tough break for Farrell. Wipes off a 47-yard touchdown catch by Louis Falcone. Great pass by Rennie Gash. He hit him on stride. First and 22. Gash is back. Gash is looking. Now the pocket collapses. He's got somebody coming from behind him. Down he goes at the 35. Gary Stein in on the stop that time for Southern Columbia. Boy, they really are getting great pressure. Gash, yeah, he's coffee quick with his feet, but nowhere to hide this well, time. Look, look at Stein this. was all over it. And look at big Mike Madera coming in from the right side. Stein, number 66, uh, Gary Stein. Also Mark Sicily in there. I got the clock, Danny. Pocket collapsed almost immediately on quarterback Renny Gash of Farrell. Did Farrell the wise looking. thing, just go down. Now they're looking at second and 27 here, 15 seconds to go. I don't think they're going to now at the 35 yard line gash is back gash is looking he's gonna throw has a man it's Falcone he's bringing a 20 he's got the 10 caught from behind at the five two seconds to go in the half incredible play a long gander 59 yards somebody asleep at the switch in the secondary for Southern Columbia this time Eddie Gash has a nice pocket he waits for his receiver to run the route there he is, Louis Falcone, out all by his lonesome at the 35-yard line. Gash hits him in stride, but unfortunately, Falcone can't get his footing. What a play from behind by Mike Myers, though, yeah. to save a touchdown right. because this is a real tough call. It's first and goal from the five. Two seconds remain. Let's go to Gary Sutton. Gary, what hustle by Mike Myers. He may have really saved, in a way, the game for Southern Columbia, depending on outcome here. That was the same exact play they came back to on Falcone. I think they wanted to run before when they got the holding call and they went in for the apparent touchdown. That time, a little bit more of a setup type of look, and they caught Falcone coming downfield. 
Now, right now, if you're Farrell, you're in a very precarious position. You've got two seconds to go here in the first half. Well, they're going to kick, Gary, but it's a four-point save already for Mike Myers. He's already saved four points with that play. That is just incredible hustle from behind. That's right. He saved. Strong safety. That's exactly right. It's a four-point save for Mike Myers as he tripped up Louis Falcone at the five. So, two seconds to go. Farrell will attempt a field goal. Off the right hash. Be a 22-yard attempt. If they do it. 22 yards. High snap. They're going to fake. Gas throws over the middle. He fell down. It was a short touchdown. Oh, he slipped in the end zone. Oh, breaking. Breaking hard play that time. Willie Evans fell in the end zone. The they tight had end. him wide open. Yeah, the tight end, Willie Evans. They haven't gone to him all day, and he found a seam right behind the linebackers. He was wide open, but the field is a little bit slick. Nonetheless, the pass sails over his head as Willie Evans slips and falls. And like Jed said, it would have been a sure touchdown. Oh, that is really, really tough. We'll have a look at that, put the halftime stats together for you. Third quarter action is next. You're looking at the single-A final here at Mansion Park in Altoona. Our score at halftime, six for Farrell, six for Southern Columbia. Third quarter action upcoming. can't tell you exactly why. We'll see how it shapes up as we start the third quarter. Well, Southern Columbia is going to get the first opportunity on offense as we get ready to start the third quarter of play. Joe Murphy and Scott Bloom will drop deep. Rennie Gash will kick off now for Farrell. And we are underway here in quarter number three, the championship in single A. Pretty good kickoff fielded by Murphy. Looking for a wedge, has the 25, slams forward to about the 29 or 30 yard line pretty good spot for Southern Columbia to go to work to start the second half well Southern Columbia rushing the football in the first half really their only big play a 15 yard gain by Yerkowitz again Joe Murphy he's a real dangerous cover for Southern Columbia and you can see how tough he is sticking his head right in the pile and make it the 35 where they will start first and 10 Nick Slater sophomore quarterback took over for a real good one. An All-Stater in Brad us about a year ago. Andy Helwig was a top receiver for Southern Columbia last year. He also graduated. But when you have the tradition built that Jim Roth has now with the Tigers, you don't rebuild, you reload. And they have, and they're right here again for the third consecutive year in the championship in single A. Bloom, off tackle, has a big game close to about the 38-yard line. Jason Kennedy in on the stop again. He's well. And I think he's got 10, maybe even 11 tackles, Mark. I mean, he is the last line of defense today. Well, that's right. I'll tell you why Jason Kennedy is making a lot of tackles out of his linebacker spot. That's guys, guys like Steve Marinick and Jason Crawford, the offensive lineman of Southern Columbia, opening up some nice holes up front. Gain of four on first down. Ball at the 39. Blew him again. Not much of an opening to the 41, 42 yard line. In on the stop for Farrell is James Pulliam. Again, you mentioned playing with a bad shoulder. Sometimes you don't hurt as bad on game day. <laughs> Especially championship game day. Where they're really pounding that left side of the line. They've come out of the locker room. Looks like that's the direction they're gonna go. Running behind Steve Marionak, Jason Crawford, Chuck Watchick. Like Jim Roth said, the head coach of Southern Columbia, he feels he has the best offensive line, the biggest and the best in the state at the single-A level. And off Bloom trying to get to the outside. Big hole has five and a first down to the 49-yard line, a gain of eight. Only needed four. Bloom again, stutter step move, this time around the corner. Didn't have anything inside. And again, great vision by the junior That's here. That's exactly right. This is just great instincts. He shakes a tackle, and then he skips to the sidelines before he's finally driven out of bounds. Looked like Sim Harrison was going to wrap his arms around him. Fine defensive lineman for Farrell, but uh, Bloom shook that tackle, bounced it to the outside, and picked up positive yardage. Quick handoff. Yurkowitz right up the middle. Yurkowitz moves the pile forward. Tough, tough run to the 44. Tackle is made for Farrell by Dante Newell, 240-pounder. He's a senior. Boy, tough, tough run this time. Yurkowitz taking over for Rico Rossini this week. Yeah, 
Mark Kevich, he comes into the hole, bounces off a couple of tacklers. He's been the leading rusher for Southern Columbia thus far in the ballgame. That's his seventh carry. He's got 36 yards, and Southern Columbia is faced with a second and five situation at the Farrell 45. Well, Kevich for a gain of five. Nick Slater, sophomore, under center. Reverse handoff goes to Murphy, trying to bounce to the outside, and he's going to be hemmed under. Great contain by Jason Kennedy again. Also helping him out was Lamar Claiborne, only a sophomore, gained to about the 42-yard line. Not much room that time, a yard. Yeah, here we're going to see it again. It's a quick trap and uh, spun out of one tackle, but then gang tackling by the Farrell Steelers. Gain of only about two yards. It'll be third and two. Big play for Southern Columbia. The ball in Farrell territory at the 42. A rematch in single A. We are in the third quarter. 9.25 to go. Your score on the board, 6-6. Six, six. And off Bloom to the 40-yard line. Not much there again. Sim Harrison's on top of him. Harrison has had an unbelievable day for Farrell, as has Dante Newell. They converge again. Going to be third down. We'll call it two. It's going to be very close. They're going to look for a measurement. Are they going to bring the sticks? Yeah. I don't think he got there, Mark. Ball's at the 40-yard line. They're going to bring him across. It's very close. It looks like it should be because we started out touching the line. If we're touching the line, it should be. There you hear some of the conversation on the field. This officiating crew doing a great job keeping everything under control. The crew from York. Stretching it out. First down. And they've got the good eye. First down. Boy. Stay that. Keep that one there. Seventh play of this drive upcoming now for Southern Columbia. It's the longest they have had the football all day long. And this is exactly what Southern Columbia head coach Jim Roth wants. A sustained drive. Give a little confidence to his offensive unit. Keep the defense on the bench for a while. Last week in the Eastern Final, they didn't score, but they had the ball seven minutes for 16 plays. Handed it back to Shenandoah Valley in the Eastern Final with less than a minute to go deep in their own territory. And that put the ball game away. And got them on the phone. Area code 814, reservations Altoona. Bloom trying to get to the outside. Step around, move, not much room. Jason Kennedy's got him again. Gain of three or four to about the 36. Boy, the pursuit shown by the linebacker, Jason Kennedy, number nine, is absolutely fabulous. He is really, if, if I had to pick an MVP for Farrell thus far in the ballgame, it would be Jason Kennedy. Watch number nine from your screen. He comes in, brings Bloom down from behind. There were some blockers out in front. He snuck behind the blockers, brought down Bloom for a gain of just four yards, second and six. Southern Columbia has yet to go to the air in the second half. Double handoff, the ball is loose. Murphy can't cover, ball is still loose. Ball still down there, and I think Farrell's got it. Yes, they do. Dante Newell up here to Southern Columbia, 42-yard line. It was a slippery, slippery handle for Murphy. Okay, we've seen the good points of the wing T offense. Here we're going to see the bad point of the wing T offense. It's a precision offense. If everything is not executed perfectly and very precisely, this is what can happen. Joe Murphy didn't get really get the handoff, and now he really can't get a handle on the ball. All kinds of feral defenders around. Finally, big number 75, Dante Newell, and puts his 240 pounds on the ball, and it's feral ball. Another turnover for Southern Columbia, their third of the ball game. Jim Roth having a conversation on the far side with Mark Sicily. Big, big turn of events. Third turnover for Southern Columbia at the 42. Handoff goes to Kennedy right up the gut to the 38 or 39 yard line. Let's go to Gary Sutton. Gary, you just cannot turn the football over. Doesn't matter what kind of environment you're in, but especially in a championship one here this afternoon. Well, you can't help but be struck right now, Jed, by the very fact that this game parallels last year's game so much and that Farrell has kept the score low, as I think they wanted to do. Southern Columbia has not been able to put the points on the board and control the football and punch it in the end zone the way they wanted to. And the mistakes continue to pile up. Last year, Southern Columbia shot itself in the foot several times. They've done it three times so far today. They can only hope that they can dodge this last miscue and hopefully keep Farrell out of the end zone. Second and seven now for Farrell as they look to cash in. Handoff goes to Pinkins. Pinkins trying to work the corner, and they stay home and got him at the 40-yard line. Great play by Mike Myers. Also in on the stop, Jason Machowski that time for Southern Columbia. Well, the defense of Southern Columbia obviously knows, and Pinkins is down. That could be a very critical loss. Pinkins is playing hurt. He's got a uh, banged-up leg. And here we're going to see Pinkins take a good hard pop from the linebackers, Scott Bloom and Joe Murphy. 
Pinkins a little bit slow in getting up. But what this turnover does for Southern Columbia is it fires up its defense. The defense says, okay, we've got to make an important stand here. We've got to get that ball back in the offense's hands because the offense was actually doing quite well in the opening drive of the second half. It was the eighth play of that drive, their longest drive of the, uh, of the game thus far, and Southern Columbia committed the turnover. Okay, mistakes happen. Let's move on. The defense, their job is to get that ball back into the offense's hands, and so far, they're performing very well here, trying to stop Farrell. It's a third and eight situation. Ball is at the 40-yard line of Southern Columbia, 7.02 to go. In this third quarter of play, we're still at 6-6. Mark Sicily is not in the game right now for Southern Columbia, one of their best down people. Chico He's Pinkins. standing over on the side. Chico Pinkins was the man hurt. He's okay. Big, Walked off under his own power. Big third and eight call coming. Ready? Gas drops. Looking, looking. Got great protection. Now throws it down the middle. Has a man. It's caught. First down to the Southern Columbia nine-yard line. What a catch. Lamar Claiborne, a gain of 31. What a pass by Rennie Gash on the money, right down the middle. Biggest play of the ball game, in my opinion. Faced with a third and long, Rennie Gash finds his receiver, lays it out there right on his hands. Good reception by Claiborne, nearly dropped that ball that he hung on. Excellent pass and catch for Farrell's quarterback, Rennie Gash. Receiver Lamar Claiborne gets him out of a big hole on a third and long. Now, all of a sudden, they're knocking on the door. First and goal at the nine. This is where they've been most effective with Kennedy running the football. Jason Kennedy, he'll dot the eye. Farrell trying to get back in front. Pitch back goes to Kennedy this time. Got a block to the outside. Has the five. Kennedy, touchdown, Farrell. What a run by Kennedy to the pylon to the corner. Big block at about the 11-yard line, and he got the corner and made them pay again. There's Jason Kennedy. Takes kind of a, a high and wide pitch. It's, it's off your TV screen. It was He went wide, we took go. the pitch. Chico Pinkins sprung in there. Chico Pinkins with a nice block, and he just sneaks into the end zone with one foot. Good enough. Arms go up. Touchdown. Six more points for Farrell. Yeah, he did get a nice block from Chico Pinkins. A significant extra point try upcoming right now for Farrell. They're going to go for two. Good spot to go for two. 6.13 to go in the third quarter. I'd run the same thing again. Well, they thought about it. Now they throw, and it's caught. And he scores. What a play. Gash just curled it into the end zone. Yeah. And it's caught by Pinkins. The conversion is good. And with 6, 13 to go, it's 14 to 6. Farrell by 8. I'm not sure if there was an intended receiver on this play. You're going to watch Rennie Gash, and, and Jed's absolutely right. This play was designed to possibly go to Kennedy. But he finds a receiver in, in the uh, back of the end zone, a diving catch from Chico Pinkins. He just lofted it over the head of the defenders. And Pinkins, a great catch in the end zone to pick up the two-point conversion. But you're absolutely right. That play was initially designed. It could have gone to Kennedy on the pitch. But Rennie Gash elected to find a receiver in the end zone. It worked. 14 to 6. Eight-point lead for Farrell. 6-13 to go in his third quarter of play. And Farrell takes the turnover and makes Southern Columbia pay. Well, both Farrell scores, the result of turnovers. Let's role play with the coach, Gary Sutton, down on the side. Gary, let's play the role of Jim Roth right now, head coach Southern Columbia. Got a little bit of a communication thing. You got to reach in now and connect with your club down by eight. Still a long way to go with 6.13 to go in the third quarter. We'll talk to Gary after the kick. High, end over end kick. Bloom, he's a threat at the 11. Will he get some room? Still to the outside, he was one seam from going long distance. Down at the 33. Gary, take it away. Well, you know, one of the things you have to keep, and we, and we said about it at the top of the show today, is poise. You have to make sure you stay poised, and for Southern Columbia, that's their mission. But you look at the other side, you see a Farrell team that's not supposed to be a very good passing team, and Rennie Gash has showed me an arm this afternoon. Three passes, one touchdown that was called back, but he has been able to put it on the money, and of course, another great athletic catch here for the two-point conversion. Farrell's got it all on their side right now. Southern Columbia's got to answer. Gash, only a junior, he's going to get better and better and better. Later, handoff goes to Bloom, make it. Man on the carry that time. Kevich. 
up to about, let's call it the 36 or 37 yard line. It's a gain of four. Kind of a moment of truth, if you ask me, right here for Southern Columbia. They live on the ground, but a thing that they have not had to do is come from behind late in football games. Oh, They've only a... lost twice this year, but this is usually sitting time. That's exactly right. Uh, Jim Roth has elected to sit a lot of his starters uh, throughout much of the third quarter. They, uh, they've been uh, leading ball games 37 nothing at half. That is not uncommon for the Southern Columbia team, but this is uncommon to find themselves trailing five minutes to go in the third quarter, 14 to six. Big hole for Murphy, short of a first down by yard. Dante Newell around the shoe tops to the 42. There's your time remaining in the third quarter, the left of your screen, 14 to six. Farrell leads by eight. It has been a good one. It came as advertised. Champions out of the West, Farrell won it last year, six to nothing. Southern Columbia making their third consecutive trip. Berwick will be the second team to make three consecutive treks in here in the Triple A final. And we've got too much time. Okay, you got well, it. Gary, I really sense Southern okay, Columbia is just really trying to collect things at this point. They just don't seem mentally into the football game right now. And, they're, and I think a humongous okay, undertow in this third quarter, now trailing 14-6. Gary, do you sense the same as we do up here? Yeah, I really sense it a lot. I, I think that there's a lot of indecision there, and we saw this last year, Jed. I, I think we're seeing it again right now, indecision, and I think the fact that Farrell's showing them different looks each time, too, something you guys can focus on much better up there. Farrell showing the blitz, then pulling out on it, and every single time, the young quarterback Slater's taking a look at it, not quite sure maybe what he's seeing. Third and six, Slater is back. Pitch goes to Murphy, stamped out by Dante Noel at the 36. Oh my goodness. Pitch, bang, down. Fourth down. Well, oh, you won't see this it. This is football. This is football. How it's meant to be played. The pitch to Joe Murphy and Dante Newell right there, unblocked. Really lays a lick on the tailback from Southern Columbia. Loss in the play. It'll bring up fourth and seven. And obviously, Southern Columbia is going to punt. Wow. With emphasis. Well, we'll get the ball back. I guess. Oh my goodness. Oncoming traffic. Head on collision. They go after Murphy. Chip shot. Bad nine iron shot for that matter, but effective and unreturnable to the 36 yard line. I'll tell you what, Jed, Farrell's gonna get one of these before the uh, the game's out. They come very close to blocking two punts that time. They were very close once again. 28 yard punt. Want to remind you that this broadcast is underwritten by the dairy farmers of the Pennsylvania Dairy Promotion Program to remind you that your body needs strong muscle, steady nerves, and quick energy to compete in today's athletics. Your body needs the right fuel. Got milk? Well, steady nerves, that's something you need for this game right there. 359, third quarter, 14 to 6, Farrell right now on the pedal. Handoff goes to Kennedy. He's got a big hole to the 41-yard line. It's a gain of five. They're throwing nickels down, Mark, on first down. And again, Southern Columbia's been on defense an awful lot today, and it's beginning to show at this point. Well, that's right. Farrell's in a position now with a 14-6 lead. Three minutes and 40 seconds as we look at Jason Kennedy hit the line. Jason Kennedy's had a tremendous ball game. They're at the position in this ball game right now where they don't have to pass. They don't have to throw. They, they like to use their uh, passing game only when they need to score. And they've got their points. They've got their lead. Now they can work on the clock and give the ball to their fine tailbacks. A Kennedy can with over 900 yards. Kennedy step around move lunges forward to the 44 short of a first down by about a yard and a half. Well, Gary, one thing right now, what you got to do to your players of your Jim Roth Southern Columbia, you got to sell them a message and it's called dig deep, find pride, get something done defensively. They saw Kennedy attacking the left side of the line. I don't think Gary heard us down there. Sometimes that crowd gets loud. These feral people are all excited over there and that's well, they should be. Yeah, they're looking for a second straight Single-A title. Kennedy with 11 carries now for 41 yards. Leading rusher for Farrell on the day. Third and two for the Steelers. Flags are down. They may have taken too much time. Easy, Gary, let's go back to the point I wanted you to answer the first time about Jim Roth. What you want now is, I guess you're, you're reaching into your players a little bit, their psyche and their sense of pride at this particular point down by eight and the clock ticking. 
Well, yeah, you're trying to get to a sense of pride right now, but you know, sense of pride isn't going to win the football game at the moment. Executing what you do well will, and I think that's what Jim Roth is more interested in right now, making sure that his team executes well. Those three turnovers this afternoon loom very, very large for Jim Ross' Southern Columbia team, obviously. And if you're on the other side for Farrell right now, Mark said it very well a few moments ago, you can start to do the things that you do well, which is run the football. They don't have to throw it anymore at the moment. Run the football, get first downs, keep that Southern Columbia defense on the field for a long time. Which they have done. I mean, they have had a significant advantage in time of possession. Longest Southern Columbia drive has been nine plays. They just got pushed back due to an offsides penalty. Gash looking, almost intercepted. Machowski stepped right in front of Louis Falcone at the 45. And boy, he had lots of room down the sideline. See, and that's exactly what Gary was talking about. They got out of their game. The penalty pushed them back to a third and seven. That's third and long. So they had to throw the ball. They don't like to throw the ball as much as they do run the ball. They don't, uh, and, and here, it almost gets picked off. A big play like that, an interception, can get Southern Columbia right back in this ball game. It's only a one touchdown game as is, and Southern Columbia needs that type of spark. Farrell certainly didn't want to give it to him there. They need a big return on special teams. Falcone, bad kick, takes a wobbly bounce, and they're just gonna get away from it. No, oh, Farrell getting a <laughs> great, great roll here, all the way back to about the 15-yard line. Well, Southern Columbia pinned deep, and with a minute and 57 seconds remaining, 46-yard punt by Louis Falcone, who only spent about 18 yards in the air, and did kind of a roll for a, go a golfer's roll off the yeah. tee, if you will, that time. It was not pretty, but it was very effective, as Southern Columbia pinned very deep in their own territory. They'll set up shop, first and 10, 15-yard line, under two minutes to play in this third quarter of the BIAA Championship single-A game. 14-6, to six, Farrell leads Southern Columbia. Matt Bubna, sophomore into the game at a wide receiver position. Handoff goes to Bloom. He's coffee quick to the outside. Has five, has ten, and a first down to the 25-yard line. Well, Bloom, again, great vision to the outside. Might be close enough to measure. Depends on spot. I think he got there. Boy, he's a very big 5'10", 170-pounder. He plays big. Look at this. He takes the handoff right up the gut. Starts following his blocker. That's Mike Madera out front. Couple of good blocks, shakes a tackle, and he just fights for that stick. Nearly Stretching got it out. There. Might be about a credit card short. That's about what it is. I'm surprised at the athleticism, not only the size, but the athleticism of the Southern Columbia offensive line. You saw a big Mark Madera out there. He's over 200 pounds, and he's out there pulling, leading the way for his running back, Scott Bloom. These guys are very, very good athletes. They're not just big, they're quick, okay. very solid. Inches. Nothing's gonna happen until the whistle blows. Stay on and I'll move. Minute 49 left. Boy, every possession now, every spot means everything. We are in the third quarter, getting late, 14-6, Farrell. Oh, Slater, miss handoff, and they're gonna make him, oh, he's got a big loss all the way back to the 21. Sim Harrison in on the stop. Chico Penkins is there, along with Marino Harris, a junior. Well, again, the Farrell defense, that's why they're here. That's exactly right. This is a busted play, and the Farrell defense sniffs it out. Gave uh, Nick Slater, the young quarterback, a Southern Columbia, no room to improvise. He tried to turn it in back to the line when he found that his back wasn't there. And he was gang tackled for a loss, third and three. Pitch back goes to Murphy, slams forward, has a first down, still spins to the 32. Hand of the air to say, hey, we got a first down, and that's a big, big move there. 107 left in the third quarter, and Southern Columbia needed a play and get one from the senior co-captain Joe Murphy here. Joe Murphy showing a lot of heart here, shaking off a couple of tower tackles, going helmet to helmet there. To the linebacker, and finally picking up the first down, popping up and telling the crowd he got a first down too. Myers and Bloom will line up one side. Handoff. Your Cowitz, and he's got about three or four yards. Your Kevich, rather. I know I've mispronounced that from time to time, and I apologize to Mark for that. Tough name, your Kevich. There you are, right there on the line of scrimmage as your Kevich hits that line, follows his blocker, but big number 75, that's Dante Neal. He's having a great second half here. He comes down, pulls him down from behind for a gain of just about three. 
Final 20 seconds now, bleeding away. Hand off Murphy, he's got another big game. Flies and dives to the 41, 42 yard line. He's gonna be a yard or two short of the first down. That looks to be the final play here of the third quarter. Well, Murphy beginning to establish his presence now. And now I think there's gonna be an official's timeout. You know, this looks a lot like the drive that uh, Southern Columbia came out of the locker room with. They, uh, they instituted an eight play drive, went downfield. Uh, Murphy and Bloom getting a lot of the carries and committed a turnover. Farrell took it down, scored a touchdown. Now, looks like Southern Columbia's back in that groove. They're back on their game. Gary, this officiating crew, very experienced, very familiar with one another. Why don't you explain to everybody what we're talking about? Well, you know, you're, you're looking at a group of uh, officials out here who have worked together all season long. They're from the York area down in Southern York County of Pennsylvania. And when, the, you know, just like the players, you do a good job during the course of the season, you get to play in the championship game. And for an official, they want to make sure that they give a gold medal up this afternoon, just like the players are trying to. And certainly led by Steve Keller out there right now with the white hat on. They're doing exactly that. Back Garrett, up to you. Gary, it's an animated crew as well. And I think you like that as a head coach, don't you? And as a player, you know exactly where he stands at all times. Yeah, you, you like to have a group of people together that know what they're doing, they have a feel for each other. It's just like when you play on a team, the officials are exactly the same way. They know how to work together. They've been together as a team all year long. Well, we're down to third and inches again for Southern Columbia. They'll start the clock. We'll see if they get the playoff. Third and inches, they do. Play action for Slater, looking, has a man, Yankowski, and it is intercepted. What a play. DeMarco Wilder down to the 27 yard line to end the third quarter. I don't understand why they did that. But what a play by Wilder. There you're going to see the fake handoff, play action pass. Nick has all kinds of time. The young sophomore quarterback lofts it up, but it's just a great play by the defensive back the corner, Wilder, and picking off the pass from Nick Slater. There you see Slater sets up. Has all kinds of time in the pocket. He has his receiver who's open momentarily. That's the tight end once again. Rob Yankowski and just a bit short. Just a bit short, but a good close from the cornerback. Come down from the intersection. This broadcast underwritten by the dairy farmers of the Pennsylvania Dairy Promotion Program to remind you that hard work and good nutrition will improve your performance in the classroom and on the field. You need the right ingredients in your training room. Got milk. Fourteen to six, the score as we start the fourth quarter. Let's get Gary Sutton's take on this uh, stretch like drive and the championship in single A. Gary. Well, I'd like to have some milk down here, preferably warm right now on this track, because it has gotten significantly colder since the sun went in and hit behind the clouds. But, you know, the last play, you've got to wonder a little bit. It was almost like it was the end of the game type play rather than the end of the quarter. Murphy seemed to be carving some pretty good holes out there. And instead, what you walk away with at the end of the third quarter, no momentum if you're Southern Columbia, tons of momentum if you're Farrell going to the fourth quarter and that fourth turnover for Southern Columbia. Third interception of Slater by that secondary today for Farrell. Boy, they have really covered well downfield. Rennie Gash, junior quarterback, steps under center. First and ten, ball at the 28-yard line. And off, Gunning trying to get to the outside as Marino Harris. Hit and drop by Matt Butlis. Gain of about three or four. There you're going to see the play. Gash gets the handoff to his tailback, and he's brought down by Bubnis. Bubnis doing a fine job out of the linebacker spot today. Well, in that third quarter, Southern Columbia 17 plays overall. Farrell had eight. More importantly, Farrell had a touchdown and two-point conversion. Second down, handoff. Second man through. That's going to be Carlos Daniels. He's been a story all year long. Broke his ankle in week number eight. They have to play him one way for the most part. But now Daniels at winning time in the fourth quarter has come back here. Carlos Daniels broke his ankle in the only game that Farrell lost this year to Rochester. Daniels gained over 900 yards for the Farrell Steelers this year, but he has not played a whole lot. In fact, last week was his first week back. He only gained about four yards in that ball game, but uh, they're trying to ease him back in. He's not 100%. But 
Coach uh, Lou Falcone says that hurts the team. Daniels is a top player. And he's got a first down to the 39-yard line. He came in averaging eight yards per carry. They don't need eight yards per carry. Oh, I'm sure they'll take it, but they needed five and got it. Daniels' second straight carry. Now Farrell's getting back into their ball game. They're going to run the ball. They're going to chew the clock up. We're into the fourth quarter. They've got the lead, as you see Farrell. Derek Newell up shaking first up down. for Farrell. Sorry, Mark, but you know, when we talked with Lou Falcone before the ball game, he says, you know, we've got to have Daniels somewhere sometime today, and they're, they're starting the fourth quarter with him at the tailback spot. That's right. Giving the rest of the running game a little bit of a break, get uh, some fresh legs off the bench. Three carries, 12 yards for Carlos Daniels in this ball game. Looking at Jason Kennedy, and he's going to be hemmed down by Scott Bloom, who's got his feet, ankles, and holds on for dear life. Jason Kennedy and Scott Bloom. Now, there's two busy guys today. Both sides. Both sides of the ball. <laughs> Scott Bloom has uh, uh, performed admirably out of his linebacker spot, and also he's got a lot of carries offensively. Same thing as Jason Kennedy. Jason Kennedy's, uh, in my estimation, the defensive MVP for Farrell, and he's also uh, shouldering the load here. He's the leading rusher for Farrell as well. 14 to 6 the score that's on your screen there Farrell with the lead by eight ball is loose ball still loose and I think Dante Newell covers Let's see there's a scramble for it down there, but I think Dante Newell big number 75 for Farrell's on it Let's see No Southern Columbia Oh, this is a big turn of events now, isn't it for the Tigers? Let's see who won the scrum and getting it, it's going to be Mayernick, Mark. He came out of there with a football. What a battle. And there it is. I mean, Dante Newell's on top of it here. Look at that. This is a man thing down there. You got Steve Mayernick in there, Gary Stein. He was at the bottom of that pile as well as he returns to his bench, telling his offense, let's get, let's get some points to board, tie this thing up. All children out of that pool in a big-time hurry. What a play by Mayernick. Ball at the 39. Southern Columbia gets their first break. Handoff goes to Bloom, picks and chooses his way to about the 34-yard line. Gain of five. Tackle is made by Dante Newell. You mentioned it early in the game. It's worth a mention again. First down yardage. It's very important, especially for a team such as Southern Columbia that lives and dies by the run. This time, you see Scott Bloom. He goes right behind his left guard, left tackle. Good enough for a five-yard pickup. It'll be second and five. Good first down yardage. Mike Apichel into the game as a second tight end. He's the top of your screen. Handoff. Still going. Uh, it's going to be the Currents for the first down, and they've got face mask, I believe, on the back end of that play. Yeah, your Kevich. He just kept the Pistons pumping, kept moving, did a little spin move at about the 30-yard line and picked up more. Watch. Here you're going to see him hit the line of scrimmage right behind his blockers, meets a tackler head on, little spin move, and then plows head first for a first down. Half the distance, first down. And it is a face mask. Yurkevich, uh, big carry. Boy, they put 15-yard value on that because it's from behind. Tell you what, he's a horse, too. Reason, because that saved a touchdown. That's why they put 15-yard value on that. Ball at the 13. Hand off to the outside, Murphy. He's got the five. Murphy still going all the way down to the Farrell four-yard line. It's a gain of nine, and all of a sudden now, Southern Columbia knocking on the door, thinking about maybe what they're going to do after the touchdown. I'll tell you what, the size and the uh, the experience of the offensive line of Southern Columbia just may be wearing down Farrell a little bit. These guys are very, very good players. They've all been together for a long time, and. Uh, like Jim uh, Roth says, they just may be the best offensive line in the state at the single-A level. They're going to pin it up behind Crawford. Handoff goes to Bloom. Bloom trying to get in. Bloom still going. Touchdown. Now they're to within two with 8.13 to go. They'll need to go for two. Let's find out exactly what the decision is. Well, they get their first big break, first big turnover, and chew up 49 yards in four plays. And this is a them. great run by Bloom. Yeah, it is. He's getting blocking from his fellow back, Joe Murphy, up front. And then he just, at the goal line, lowers his head, pulls his way in. Touchdown, Southern Columbia, their second touchdown of the game. Corey Billick, he's a senior, 5'11", 175 pounder. He's into the ball game as an extra blocker. Rukovic. 
Joe Murphy. They go on for two to tie the game. It's 14 to 12, Farrell, 8.13 to go. Hand off your Kevich, didn't get there. What a play that is. Marino Harris just explodes coming on the blitz that time. They figured it out and stayed home, and boy, that's a big miss. Marino Harris right there, inside linebacker, comes shooting through the gap, and look at that tackle on your Kevich. Textbook tackle, great play by Marino Harris. Four to 12 with 813 to go in the game now and Marino Harris saves the day for Farrell. Gary it's a tense taut white knuckle job in a game that comes as advertised. This is what state championship games are supposed to be like not to use a trite phrase but you have a Southern Columbia team benefiting this time from a big mistake by Farrell as it's coughed up uh, going to the line over the quarterback Southern Columbia shows its medal by coming back down and punching it in in a hurry. And of course, Slater kind of uh, pulling himself out of the hole as they go to the afternoon. 14-12 so far, you're right. White Knuckler coming down to the end. Two great teams, lots of mistakes, but an exciting game. Nick Slater is a pretty good kicker, Gary. Now you gotta start thinking about that now that Southern Columbia is down by two. I think he has winning range from 35 yards and in. Well, I think he does, uh, and again, you have a perfect field here to kick it in, so that's something that's going to loom maybe a few minutes from now. Good high end over end kick. Chico Pickens trying to wind it. He's got great speed. Is he going to get a block? Stings forward to about the 19-yard line, and Southern Columbia now getting a very excited on both sides of the football. And, Gary, we were waiting for the momentum to swing. And it, I think it has Southern Columbia enjoying the wave for now. Touchdowns have a funny way of getting things going for you again right away. And Southern Columbia just surging to the ball that time with the special teams, keeping Farrell at the 19-yard line. And you just feel like momentum has shifted in this game in the second half in such a hurry both ways. This time, it's riding with Southern Columbia. And there's the momentum shifter. We're looking at Scott Bloom pull his way into the end zone for the second Southern Columbia touchdown of the day. 8.03 to go in this ball game, we think. 14-12. Farrell still holds their lead. Big dent put in it by that Southern Columbia touchdown. Hand off Kennedy, both arms wrapped around the football as he swings forward to about the 23-yard line. Gain of four. Second and six upcoming. Well, the moment of truth now for the Southern Columbia defense. They have to scratch in now. Nick see. Rossini on the stop. There you see Kennedy, and there was absolutely no room in the interior line. Somehow he snuck through for a gain of four. I don't know how. Time very much a factor. There you see the coaching staff of Southern Columbia pensively looking on, saying, hey, we need this football back. Can't do anything with it on defense, but now. And off, second man through, gonna be Carlos Daniels. He doesn't add the first down, but positive yardage forward to about the 26-yard line. Getting a big, big block up front that time. Ernie Somerset, he's six feet, 330 pounds. Look at number 70 on your screen. That is a Somerset. big time load. Yeah, that's, a, that's a big man, Ernie Somerset. He's only a junior, six foot, 330 pounds. He's been doing a tremendous job up front with Farrell this afternoon. Big, big third down in this game. It's three yards to go at the 26. Block continues to wind with 6.40 to go in the game. Gash cutting it upfield. I don't think he got there. It's close, though, to the 29. Where are you, Michael? Put it down where you want, right? Here are the officials working with each other. They know this spot is absolutely crucial in this game. There you are, about as close as you can get to the spot of that ball here in the fake handoff. And Rennie Gash, tremendous athlete, tries to turn it upfield. The linebackers close very quickly. Talking about bubbles, Joe Murphy. And Nick Rossini. Let's go to Gary Sutton. Gary, you say first down? I think it's a first down right now as they start to measure it out. Chad, right now, if you're Farrell High School, you want to try to get about two more first downs, and you can put Southern Columbia in one heck of a hole here as they're just running the ball, wearing out the clock, and the clock can be your worst enemy right now if you're Southern Columbia. It's your biggest friend if you're the Farrell Steelers. That's exactly right. Farrell can play their ball game. That means 
They can run the ball. They can control the clock, and this is what they plan to do. 6.22 to go in the fourth quarter. 14-12, Farrell over Southern Columbia. Each team with three timeouts to work with. That could come up huge. Handoff, Carlos Daniels trying to get outside. Nothing there. Gary Stein had the first stop. Scott Bloom, Eric Steppen clean up afterwards at the 31. Gain of two, it'll be second and eight. Southern Columbia has their full complement of timeouts remaining. And it could come down to that. Mark Madera now on the sideline. He's one of the better down people for Southern Columbia. It's not hurt. They're just getting some fresh troops in there. They better hurry up. You sense now that the play clock's kind of winding down a little bit. Jason Kennedy is back on. He'll dot the eye. It's second and eight now for Farrell. Looking to move the chains and strike gold for a state championship. Kennedy, second time through. Hammered down. Great play by Mark Sicily. Sicily, six foot, 250 pounder. And he needed all 250 to hold off Kennedy that time on the surge through. That hole closed very quickly. You see Jason Kennedy, he finds his spot. Good blocking up front, but there is Sicily coming in. With a little help from the linebacker. Name again, Scott Bloom. Been calling that name a lot. And uh, big play from Southern Columbia's defensive unit. Now, Farrell is faced with a third and five situation at their own 34-yard line. 4.55 left. There's Big your play. time remaining as Southern Columbia digs in on defense. Looking with a 5 two, eight guys in the box. Handoff, Kennedy, step around, moving up first down all the way up to the 43-yard line. A gain of nine. They needed five. Boy, is that big for oh, Farrell. Yeah. That certainly made Southern Columbia head coach Jim Roth wince a little bit. Let's go down to Gary. Gary moving the chains. That's what it's all about. Kennedy, thoroughbred run that time off tackle. Jed, what that first down forces Southern Columbia to now do is to dig into that full complement of timeouts because they are basically now in a desperation situation. Farrell gets one more first down, possibly two. This game's over. They're going to have to use the timeouts quickly or they'll have no time if they do get the ball back to do anything. They can let two or three more plays run off, but that means they got to get the ball back. And there you see the sense of urgency by the Southern Columbia defense. They know what's going on. Hear the officials talk, hold me up, hold me up, easy now. Make sure everybody gets separated, only a yard. That, that was Jason Kennedy once again. He's the leading rusher for Farrell in this ball game. 16 carries, 61 yards. It has been tough to run. They have come grudgingly today on the ground. Yeah, especially that last one. That was a, that was a very, very tough run. Tough yard for the Farrell Steelers. 340 and counting. This ball game is uh, could wind to a climactic finish uh, if uh, Southern Columbia's defense can stiffen and get the ball back into the offensive unit's hands. Well, by digging their way out, and I think they took too much time, and that is a huge mental mistake there for Farrell, because now the delay of game means the clock stops with 3:31 and won't restart until the play begins. Delay of game on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Still second down. And 14 to go from the 39-yard line now. That's right, and that forces Coach Lou Falcone of Farrell to do what he really doesn't want to do. It could force him to put the ball in the air. I'm sure they'll try a running play on second, but possibly, if that doesn't gain a lot of positive yardage, they may have to throw on third down, and Falcone certainly does not want to do that. If they throw, it's deep downfield up the middle, where you can't get a return that easily. Play action, handoff Kennedy. Kennedy, big hole, slams forward to the 45-yard line, short of a first down. It's a gain of six. It'll be about third and eight upcoming now for Farrell. This another, is the fourth straight carry for Jason Kennedy. That's another big point in this ball game. You see Jason, Car Jason Kennedy carrying the ball through the line of scrimmage. They picked up about six yards on the play, but that'll still leave... Farrell with a nice piece of real estate to attain a first down. Third and eight. The ball on the 45-yard line. Watch Louis Falcone. He's probably the hot receiver. Machowski will pick him up. Top of your screen. Play action. Randy Gass running forward. Close to the first down. Lunging forward. Oh, that's close enough to even go on fourth down. He may even have it down there at about the Southern Columbia 47-yard line. Well, that's that's close. That is very close, and that's a good point you make that it may be close enough that if they're shy, Coach Lou Falcone may elect to go forward on fourth down. Left the weight upon the spot and the measure. Fourth or first. That's, 
hear the officials, fourth or first. But I think they even go if they're short. It's only going to be a couple of inches. Gary Sutton, you're standing down there right now. What do you see for us? I really think it's going to be a couple of feet short here. And they're measuring it's about uh, two feet short. You got about fourth and two feet. Might as well let them roll. You got to go for it, I think. The confidence, your defense really is what got you here, Mark. And I mean, you've got to have enough confidence to be able to pick up a couple of feet. Well, okay. Chico Pinkins, he is the normal punter. He can't punt due to a leg injury. So, your second streak punter has been Falcone. Now, he got a good roll on the last punt, but his punts have not really been that long and that high. They're going for it. Uh, this is a good call by Lou Falcone. Right? Total agreement with this. Moment of truth in the game. Fourth and about two feet. This could be the game. Farrell steps in. Rennie Gash, power eye formation. Handoff goes to Kennedy. He's got the surge for the first down to the 45-yard line, but a flag is down. This is Somebody a jump for Farrell. I think that's against the Steelers. Yes, I do believe, yep. Somebody jumped early offside, Farrell, and that hurts. Now you got to punt. I believe the left side of the line moved, and that's exactly right, Jed. That forces Lou Falcone to punt the ball right now. Encroachment, offense, five-yard penalty, still fourth down. Well, that's an unfortunate turn of events for Farrell in that uh, huge penalty. It had appeared as if Kennedy had picked up the first down, and they would have been on their way to a kind of a, a, a clean skate to, to uh, burn up the rest of this clock. But right now, they're going to have to turn the ball back over to Southern Columbia. They went nine plays, used up almost six minutes. Ball spiraling away. Myers Ooh. thought about it and then just got out of the way, and they're going to down it at about the 12-yard line. 2.06 to go in the game, and here you go with Southern Columbia, a team all year that has never had to use the air to come from behind. They need it now to win a state championship. That's right. Southern Columbia hasn't really been put into a situation where they had to do a two-minute drill to win a ball game. Farrell has. Now, Southern Columbia's got their work cut out for them. A lot of real estate ahead. 88 yards to go to pay dirt. And within field goal range, they've got a good 65 to 70 to go. Handoff goes to Bloom. Bloom trying to get up field. Has the 18-yard line. It's a gain of six. Still too early, I think, to start thinking about timeouts. you got to go quick, though. Nick Slater, a sophomore quarterback, throwing up in a hurry right now at this very second. 145 left. They're quickly out. Well, Coach Jim Roth told us that Nick Slater is a very bright kid, he's second in his class, a very heady quarterback. He said he's a football player. He knows what to do out there. Oh, you're Kevich to the 19-yard line, and these running plays, when you don't get the first down or kill any, they got to use a timeout, and they do with a minute 30 to go. Third and about four or five upcoming now for Southern Columbia. The season at stake. It's good to Gary Sutton. Gary, one thing very frustrating when Southern Columbia is on defense there, long drive, nine plays, six minutes for Farrell. It's uh, it's just mind-numbing if you're a coach. You really feel helpless, don't you? Well, you're in a position in the game here where you have to get some yardage in a hurry. You only have a minute 30 to go. You've had two running plays that have counted basically for nothing thus far. And you really have to get into a position now where you get some chunks of yardage and start to think at least about field goal range. Field goal range means they're going to have to get down somewhere in the neighborhood of about the 15-yard line to have a shot at it. And so Southern Columbia, whether they like it or not right now, has to pass the ball. But they now are two less downs closer to that. They need to make sure that they get a first down and continue to try to keep this drive going. Obviously, Farrell has their strength on the field, which is their defense. And now it seems to be stiffening up tougher than ever. The last team from the WPIAL to win in single A was Duquesne back in 1993. Big third down play coming up for Southern Columbia. Southern Columbia has not been extremely successful in third down situations. They're five of eight third down conversions in this ball game. There you see the Southern Columbia fans. Boy, they're nervous right now. Slater, handoff goes to Bloom outside. It's close. I don't think he got there. It's about a yard shy of a first down. And that's the spot at the 21. They need the 22. It's going to be fourth and about a yard now for Southern Columbia. Did get out of bounds, though, stopping the clock with a minute 24 to go. There you're going to see Bloom. He shakes off a tackle right there in the backfield. That was number 55, Sim Harrison. He uh, he almost wrecked that play single-handedly and stopped Bloom for a loss. But uh, Bloom shook the tackle, got to the outside, 
I don't think he's there, Gary. I, I uh, Gary's he moving over there for us, and I think he's about a half yard shy. Gary, you, you got it for us over there. Half yard shy, okay. He needed the 22. But more importantly there you now, see Mark. It. Yeah. What, what, Good job by our WITF crew there, right on top of the action. 14 to 12. Well, the season at stake now. They're not going to use a timeout, don't have to. But more importantly, Mark's going to take 25, 30 seconds off the clock, even to convert here. That's absolutely right. Gary's uh, absolutely correct in that they've got to get to at least the 15-yard line to attempt a field goal. They're currently on the 20. Well, so they need more than that. I think they need the Farrell 25 or 30 to have a shot. Their odds are better at the Farrell 20, but okay. right now to even get that option, they need fourth and a half yard. Handoff going to go to the outside. It's going to be Murphy. Oh, I don't know. He looks to be shy. In on the stop, and what a game he has had for Farrell. My fault, Terry. I'm sorry. It's going to be Dante Newell. They're going to give him the forward progress and a first down. Oh, boy, they are lucky there. Yeah, a tremendous job by Dante Newell. How much did we lose? He okay. got a yard. Watch number on, 75 in here. He's moved, shakes off his blocker. Sim Harrison there too. Sim Harrison and Dante Newell. That interior line has done a tremendous job seconds. because I'll tell you what. One, one, six. We're, we're gonna put six seconds right back on the clock. But because these guys, Dante Newell, Sim Stay Harrison, Brian Cusick, James Pulliam, okay. these guys are working against one of the best offensive lines that, uh, that they're gonna ever play against. And they are doing a tremendous job standing up their opposition. This has really been won and lost in the trenches. Here we go, Slater. Back it goes to Murphy. He's a third string quarterback downfield as a man and broken up. What a play by Rennie Gash. Pass intended for Myers. Joe Murphy had it laid out there. Enough air under it at about the 41. A little oh, bit of trickery boy. for Southern Columbia. Well, that's uh, that's uh, deep in the playbook of the Delaware wing team. As the Slater hands off to Murphy. Murphy, all kinds of time, and he gave Myers a live action here. plenty of time to run his route. With 106 to go. Slater is back. Blitz is coming. Throws down the middle. Has a man. First down, Bloom. Up near the Farrell 37-yard line. Chico Pinkins with a strong tackle. And now flags fly. And I'm not sure whether or not they're going to get a flagrant Unsportsmanlike call. Unsportsmanlike after the Hill. ball. No, wait. Wait. Boy, that's against against Southern the Columbia, ball. they're going to hit Murphy ball with ball it ball for ball. throwing Pinkins back. Ball. Oh, that play will just kill you. There you're seeing Scott Bloom. Make contact. And I believe Scott Bloom's going to get whistled for personal foul. The, the personal foul. After the reception and the tackle by Pinkins. I believe there was some extracurricular hitting well, while Pinkins both were dropped him really hard, threw him down. And like all sometimes, the retaliation is what the official sees. Boy, and that's an absolute killer. Oh. Personal foul on the offense. First down and 25. After a beautiful game, a first down. Pinkins was following through on the tackle. And then Murphy retaliated somewhat. And that's where the unsportsmanlike call comes. Ball all the way back to the 23-yard line. Back goes Slater. Blitz is coming. Not much time. Your Kevich, step around, move to the 20, and down he goes for the 23-yard line. Better hurry. Down to 40 seconds to go. They need to use timeout. It's about second 25. They need a timeout. They're not going to use it. 35 seconds left. Slater under center. Steps back, throws, has a man. It's going to be Bloom up near the 33-yard line. Short of a first down, didn't get out of bounds. Clock can, now they say it did. They stopped the clock with 25 seconds left. There you're going to see the quarterback, Nick Slater, play action pass once again, finds Bloom out into the flats. Lamar Claiborne, good job in tackling Bloom and so that he tried to tackle him while he was inbounds, but Bloom skipped out of bounds to stop the clock. 25 seconds and counting to go in this ballgame. Third and 15, Slater over the middle, and it's... Dropped by Murphy, Rennie Gash. Dropped the hammer at the 48-yard line. That was a tough, tough, tough play for Murphy to come down with, and he's shaken up. 
There's a lot of hitting going on in this ball game on both sides of the ball. You're going to see one of the biggest hits of the ball game right here as Joe Murphy keeps trying to keep his eyes on the ball. He knows that that safety, Rennie Gash, is in the vicinity. But Murphy, a tough kid, does what he has to do and tries to make the reception. Tried to disregard that safety coming on, but he paid the price for it. It's good to Gary hit. Sutton. Gary, uh, well, emotions are running high. 20 seconds remain. And Farrell, one play away from winning again in single A. Well, and Lou Falcone is about to get a little drenching here. If we can get our cameras down near him, the guys have got the cooler out, the obligatory dumping. But Not over yet, though. You still have one big play to go, and Southern Columbia still has a chance with 20 seconds, so maybe you want to keep him dry for a few more minutes. Flags are down. Let's see what the penalty is. Offside, lining no. up in the neutral zone against Southern Columbia. Encroachment on the offense. Fourth down. Looks like uh, one of the players might have lined up in the neutral zone. Well, the emotions you see, you run the whole gambit. The highest and the low. Slater, play action, pumps once. Deep ball into the air, and it's out of bounds, and that's going to do it. Fourth and 20. Farrell, all they need to do is touch a knee. I'll take you around. You can see the Farrell bench. Gary, what are you seeing down there? What a what a performance by their defense. I mean, they have been in so many close games. The, you know, I think their ability to play in the clutch really, really came to fore today for the, well, for, for added, the Steelers. Well, an added surplus this afternoon, Jeff, was the fact they got the lead, something they're used to having, but they're going to run it out right here and put this away. I, you just keep getting the impression down here all afternoon that Farrell had Southern Columbia's number, the both leaders, and they proved it again today. We know what you're going to do. We know how to stop it. And if you give us a few mistakes in addition, we're going to win this whole thing. And Southern Columbia, I think, is going to burn another timeout. They have one, one more to use. Okay. Delay the agony just a little bit. Nope. Take a timeout. Called by Farrell. I want to remind you that this broadcast is underwritten by the dairy farmers of the Pennsylvania Dairy Promotion Program who remind you that hard work and good nutrition will improve your performance in the classroom and on the field. You need the right ingredients in your training room. Got milk? 11 seconds to go, and Farrell is state champion again in single A. Gash goes to a knee. And we've got some battles going on on that field and Farrell is going home a state champ again second consecutive year that they have defeated Farrell at Southern Columbia for the state championship in single A well you know Mark we always talk there are no losers at this particular level great ball game Excellent ball game, and that's a very good point. There are no losers. Yeah, Farrell won the state title, but Southern Columbia, what a great program under head coach Jim Roth. 146 wins in his career, but uh, two bitter defeats coming in the state title game two years in a row. Last year, Farrell won 6-0. This year, a little bit closer, 14-12, and the thing that has to really bug coach Jim Roth, those four costly turnovers in the part of Southern Columbia. No need to make excuses for Southern Columbia, but Rico Rossini, their leading ground gainer, uh, broke a bone in his shin uh, last week in the uh, Eastern Final against Shenandoah Valley. Final thoughts from the coach, Gary Sutton. Gary? Since 1994, when Southern Columbia last won this championship, they've only had four losses, 25 wins, but half of those losses have now come to this team, Farrell, out of the western part of the state, and both losses meant state championships for Farrell and a dry trip to the well for Southern Columbia. Certainly a great effort by both teams this afternoon, but Farrell once again proves it knows Southern Columbia's number. Back up to you guys. Well, I'd like to thank George Zurich for keeping the book, our great crew here at WITF. Mark off to a great start on the weekend in single A, the final. Farrell over Southern Columbia, 14 to 12, and a big, big drive in the uh, third quarter after a turnover got it done. And you got to give Farrell all the credit in the world. They came in here banged up. A lot of key people had a lot of injuries, and they just got it done. They played a very physical game, and that had to be hard for a team that is uh, hurt so very badly by injuries. But these kids played. They played a little bit banged up, but they played on the list, and they, they came away with a state title. A 
great uh, showing of heart by the Farrell Steelers here this afternoon. All right, that's all. Another year and another championship for Farrell, the Steelers, the lone helmet. And boy, did they get the job done. Our thanks to Brad Cashman, Bob Lombardi, Elliot Hopkins, and everyone associated with the PIAA and Mansion Park here in Altoona. They do a great, great job keeping us uh, comfortable here. So a great start to the championship weekend. The grade eight championship in single A goes to Farrell, 14 to 12 against Southern Columbia. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you.